So it's such a lovely, warm, beautiful night. Hello, everyone. Howdy. It's the one-armed hamster. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> 747 Central Time. United States of America. St. Louis, Missouri. Ghost Pill was here early. Hi. Hi, Ghost. All right. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. I haven't decided yet because I was talking to Barbara Ann. And, you know, Barbara Ann looks like my big sister. Little hamster. You need to go to the doctor. You got to get your hand look. Oh, my God. You got to get. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe we'll see. But I did have to get out the heavy duty material. The oxy. What the fuck is this shit called? Hold on. Oxy content that I got several years ago when I had uh, the, 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 the gout. It was actually really an unusual situation. Mr. Brandon's here, Mr. Hemi Four Speed, Lord Jeremy Hirsch, JLM, hello. Good to see you guys. Hope everything's all right. Sounds like you made it. So to wherever, we, you're going to Missouri, right, Brandon? So cool. We'll uh, talk to you tomorrow on your uh, on your stream. So <clears throat> I did find some Guinnesses. So I, mm, mm, mm. Anyway, so I get up in the morning. This would have been, it says 2017, which sounds about right. Seven years ago, six years ago. I couldn't fucking move. I couldn't get out of bed. I had to fall out of bed and crawl on my hands and knees. Because I had the gout in my ankles, both of them, and both my hands. I couldn't move. I couldn't wipe my ass. I couldn't cook. I couldn't open a can of soup, nothing. And so I, I suffered with that because I didn't know what was going on. And so <clears throat> I suffered with that for about two days, and I finally said, fuck this, I'm going to the doctor. And so Dr. Hope was her name, Dr. Hope. Uh, she said, oh, yeah, you got gout. I'm like, what, gout? Uh, here, take this shit, and uh, here's some oxy. I said, oh, okay. And, of course, I asked her about it. I said, excuse me, doctor, isn't this shit addictive? You know, I mean, you could get addicted. To ah, no, no, not if you take it as directed. And it says, here, take one every four hours. And they go, okay. So it doesn't really kill the pain for me, but it does kind of calm you down. Mr. Hemi, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like a little head buzz, you know what I mean? So it's not like a uh, falling over kind of thing. But, yeah, I could see how it, uh, you know, could be abused. But, yeah, I, I'm, I took one because, uh, man, it was, it was rough. I actually took a shower, took the, the, the brace off and all that stuff, and then I laid down on the bed, fell asleep, and I got up, and I'm, like, screaming because it hurt really bad. So anyway, we'll see because I'm thinking to myself, okay, hamster, you go to the doctor. They're going to take an x-ray or you have gout, one or the other, right? It's gout or you broke your arm. Take your pick. <clears throat> so what are they going to do, right? If it's a broken wrist, they're just going to give you one of these things I already have and just say, you know, take your Motrin every four hours, you know, drink lots of water, take some vitamins. If it's gout, it's like there's nothing really they can do except give me some of that shit, the steroidal uh, anti-inflammatory stuff, maybe, but apparently that's off the table for now. That's a no-no, I guess. So anyway, so who's in the chat? Ghost Pirate Sloan of Lachlan. Hello. Laundry's here. Mr. Hemispeed, sort them, snort them for maximum effect. <laughs> oh my God, stop it, Mr. Hemi four speed. Oh my, that's probably, that's probably uh, common uh, consumer over-the-counter stuff in Canada, you crazy people up there. RP Pope is here. How are you doing, Mr. Brother Pope? Ray Pacheco is here. What's up? Ah, same old shit. JLM says, I took a couple of Vicodin to weight tables because my foot was so, yeah, foobard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, when you have gout, oof, the fucking A. Whew. Anyway, well, anyway, yeah, let's get to Pearl. Now, I don't know what uh, what Pearly is trying to do here. Hello, Pokey. Pokey Zealot Master One is in the building. Eric Zombro, hello, easy. Did you know that Brandon was kind of up in your neighborhood today? He probably didn't stop and buy you lunch because he's that kind of guy, you know. Hamster, are you going to fap to pearly things? Uh, no. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a big no. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. She likes, uh, well, she likes her men a little, well, a different shade of, uh, well, uh, uh, uh. Sonic Viper here. Hello. David Graham. Is Pearl a real ginger? I don't know. We'd have to check the video. <laughs> That's, mm. Anyway. Mm. Delicious Guinness. So, 
where is she getting this presentation from? You know, she tried to embark on a different sort of uh, listen to what I'm saying. What up, guys? Welcome to the Just Curly Things YouTube channel and welcome. To what up, guys? What up, guys? Oh, what the fuck is that? <laughs> what up, guys? It's like, dude, what are you? Who are you trying to appeal to, Pearl? I, I'm I'm sorry. Do the sit down uh, where I bring on different uh, guests to talk about uh -huh, feminism, men uh, and women's relationships, and other yeah. topics. Before I start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hey, Pearl, I know you've got three million fucking subs, and you're making shitloads of money. I get it. You you've done pretty well for yourself. God damn, this is not this is not a good presentation. I don't like the way you're doing that. But hey, fuck me. What do I know? I got fourteen thousand subs, and I made zero money. And bring that notification you bell. Let's no. get this video to Rob Alsh says she's a grifter. Mm, you think? 2,000 oh. likes. That's the most important metric. Brilliant observation, Rob. Rob, 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 Rob. See, I get your name all in one there. Why well, say Rob How when you just say Rao? Uh, uses to push out these streams. Also, get yourself a Women Shouldn't Vote t shirt today. Uh, you know, you guys. Uh, the grift goes on and on and on and on. <sighs> well, I mean, Pearl, I mean, you know, I'm not going to talk about her looks but i mean she is a athlete right and i've noticed the the really athletic women like she was like almost like olympic level you know athlete really good there's something different about them they have really low body fat and there's just something weird about the super athletic women not that it's a bad thing i was saying they don't they, they don't have the same body fat i guess content as you know a normal non non-athletic uh, female that guy know my opinion the breakdown mm. of the family everything is mm -hmm. all because women got the right to vote get and if we buy that t-shirt everything's gonna be solved oh my god get yourself a t-shirt all the women will come up to you and say how <clears> awesome <throat> you are right right so why are we doing this hamster don't, don't you have something better to do go snort your oxycontin no 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 it's uh because karen strong girls girl writes what who is like an OG <clears throat> men's rights, honey badger. She's been around a long time. She's, uh, you know, like I said, she's an OG. So let's uh, let's go. Paul Elam as well. <laughs> so welcome yeah. to the show, guys. Can you give Come. the audience um, a little background? I'm starting uh, with you, Paul. Yeah, yeah I'm Paul Elam. Uh, my website. Paul Elam. Oh, my God. He's a Nazi. It's paulelam.com. I've been involved in working around men and men's issues for nearly. Brandon says she looks drunk. I don't know if she's drunk or not. I don't know. I don't know anything about Pearly except she was a little different. She's changing her style here. So I don't know if it's a good thing, bad thing. I, it's not for me, though. You know, just it's just too disingenuous. It's fakey. Nearly 40 More fake years now. Normal. My YouTube channel is an airformen.com. And you can also mm -hmm. uh, find me at paulelam.com forward slash XY crew for our men's groups that deal. RP Pope, why is hamster on drugs? I broke my arm, I think. So it hurt me re bad. <laughs> re bad. So I, I just, uh, <clears throat> I've been taking Motrin and all that shit, but it's like I got up a couple hours ago. It's like, oh my God. So I got out the heavy duty stuff. Maybe I'll take one or two and that's it. I don't want to get hooked on any kind of shit. Got with these very topics every no. day of the week. Okay, so I'm. Oh my God, it's Karen Strahan. A divorced mother of three, remarried. Um, all my children are adults now and mm. uh, gainfully employed and responsible citizens. I that's good. don't even know how yeah. that happened. But yeah. And no Karen's up in what? Uh, Alberta somewhere, I think. Is she up in Calgary, maybe? Is that Alberta? Oh, I, I've been involved in uh, men's rights and anti-feminism for about, well, since about 2010, when I started mm -hmm. discussing the issues online and what... Yeah, yeah, I, I, I saw you right from the start almost there, sweetie. ...led me to be interested in them was that I was going through my divorce at that time. And you know how when you when you divorce, you have this extremely mm -hmm. long detailed list, right, mm -hmm. down to every last little thing of what mm -hmm. they did wrong. But right, if you don't right. want to have something like that happen again, you actually have to try and figure out what you did wrong. And because uh, it's never only just one person screwing up and ruining a marriage. So I 
stumbled, I was looking for answers and I stumbled across a men's website called the Spearhead and I started participating in the um, comment section there and uh, it was brutal. It was absolutely brutal, but fair, but totally fair. And I started reading all of these articles about things like mm. domestic violence and sexual right. assault and false right. allegations right. and yep. divorce law and alimony and child support laws and yep. all kinds of things like that. And I thought, well, this is not the world I want my sons to grow up in. And it's definitely not even the world that I want my daughter to grow up in because if you if you completely destroy the I mean, yeah, let's be fair to Pearl. Maybe it's uh three o'clock in the morning, you know, where she is. Because I mean, Karen's in Canada and I don't know where Paul is, maybe Michigan somewhere. So I mean Pearl's in London, so they're you know eight hours ahead or whatever. So who knows, right? It might be three in the morning. So she eh, threw out some makeup, it's looking a little ragged. Tom Laundry says she's high. Eh, I don't know. I don't know. JLM, not any. Eric Zumbro, I know you're, I, 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 I got you. I, I hear you. Between that men have for women. Iridium Kush, one year anniversary stream. Is that tomorrow? Holy shit. Has it been a year already? Well, congratulations, sir. And uh, we'll look forward to that tomorrow on the Iridium Kush's channel. One year stream. It's a beautiful birthday cake, by the way. <laughs> I love it. SE, Master Ranch is in the building. I believe Paul's in Virginia. Okay, well, sure, that makes oh, somewhere in the US anyway. So, and I think Karen's in Mountain Time Zone, but I think she's Calgary or Edmonton or something like that. So, go ahead. How can your daughter be able to go out and form a relationship with someone who's trustworthy if he's always, if he's pretending to trust her not to screw him over, then it's because he's planning to screw her over, right? Ooh, so, uh -oh, I, I was uh -oh. just like, no. No, this is not a good way to form families and uh, have a functioning society. And uh, so, I mean, you know how long I've been on doing this shit or good <laughs> cushy? 2015. So that'd be what, eight years now? Yeah, about eight years. Holy shit. Oh my God. He can do math in his head even. Oh no. Michelle Guevara is here live from Paris, France. It is 3 a.m. in the morning. Hello, Michelle. So I just started Bonjour. talking about it. And, you know, there was an aspect of someone is wrong on the internet uh, mm. as well. It's funny oh, when you I can't, first... I can't, I can't leave people to say stupid things and then just mm. walk away oh, yeah. with nobody pushing back on them. So. Well, it's funny when you first, like, get into the red pill space as a chick. Because, like, I, I think we're just so used to being, like, pandered to. Warms your heart. Kush. Warm that bong up, baby. Come on now. <laughs> it's a celebration. Ooh. Three, four, seven, and you hear it, you're like, oh wow, this is how this is what guys think. And it's kind of like a oh. it's kind of like a shock at first. But then I don't know how it was for you, but for me, I was like, oh, this is actually helpful to know. I was like, this is actually mm -hmm. like useful information. I think there's two different kinds of women out there that get in into the red pill space. And there are those who look at the pushback from men and say, well, given what they're living with and working mm -hmm. with every day, this is understandable. Uh, it's not pleasant, it's not pretty, but I get it. This is the way they feel. And the, there's lots of women that get into the red pill space also that get some of that pushback and all of a sudden we're evil <laughs> and we're yeah, everything yeah, feminists have, uh, have always said we were. So I like that. Uh, yeah, it looks like Elam's uh, hasn't missed the meal for a while. Sure. Yeah. Good. Good for him. I, on the other hand, have missed like four meals, five meals. I haven't eaten like for three days because <laughs> of whatever. So half, half, Hamster's first stream was... Uh, pwned and horse drawn. <laughs> God, I can't remember what the hell the first stream was about. I probably deleted it. You know, like that old shit. You might have said stupid things at some point and it comes back and they, they strike your channel. All that crap. Emmy, LOL. I remember when Gore said that. Yeah, I do too. Uh, we invented the internet. Wow, what a fucking liar. My God. Those guys out there giving yeah. the pushback for the for the reason that it mm -hmm. really gets the non-hackers out of the way so that women who really want to speak to these issues can it's nice to have them they're they're a very 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 effective vetting committee yeah moon yeah well i'm gonna eat here in a bit uh i've been kind of sick i think i had half a flu actually to be honest and then i broke my arm so it's <laughs> it's Oh, God, it's a real bitch, Moon, getting old, you know. I mean, you run into a wall, it's like, oh, whatever, and bah, your arm falls off. It's crazy. Uh, go ahead. Sorry. Basically, you know, if you're, if you're real, you'll stick. By the way, Moon is here. Hello, Moon. Thank you for the artwork in the upper right corner of your screen, that hamster with a little 
ginger assassin knife there. around. And, yeah. you know, I saw a couple of women who were like totally on board with the guys at the spearhead until, you know, one of them said something particularly insulting about women and, or maybe. Uh, oh, it's not really the modified cold, Kush. Oh, thanks, Moon. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, I'm fine. I just got to work through this, whatever the hell happened to my arm. No, it's not the modified. No, it's not even sick at all. <clears throat> the weirdest thing is. The only symptoms I had, it was like chills and sweats, right? I got up this morning and my entire freaking bed was covered with sweat, right? Which was really weird because it wasn't hot. I don't know what was going on, but I was sweating. Then I'm cold. Then I'm sweating again. And the da -da -da. so I don't know what the hell is going on. Char as the is here. Hello. Char as the Yeah. Moon, are you bagging it up now, or is this your impression of, I don't know, what are you talking about? Oh. Was rude to them, and then they pulled their woman card and said, well, you Yes, X, Y, Z, C, T, <laughs> menopause, <laughs> the hot flash, it's, oh my God. Can't be rude to me. I'm a woman, and, mm. you know, you don't treat women like that, and they were like. Right, because, you know, equality and shit. Yeah, you can go fuck off now. <laughs> you know, and, and they would get booted out, and it's like. No, you can't, you can't, these guys are being honest about how they feel. And uh, Grinch, I don't know what the hell happened. I'm going to be honest with you. We were talking about it earlier. You know, I may have, uh, well, uh, may have gotten drunk one night and fell over and it just was maybe cracked it a little bit. And then I brought the garbage out, maybe hit the freaking dumpster and so it would just went crazy. I don't know. Crack a beer hamster. <laughs> you can taste it. Oh, I can taste it. All right. <laughs> oh, you, you know, hamster. <laughs> Easy. You know I can taste my Guinness. They are often being brutal. The thing is, I didn't even want a Guinness yesterday or the whole week. I'm like, I don't want to drink. I just want to go to bed. <laughs> well, I guess, you know, I'm getting better because now I want to drink. To be honest, because that's the only way anybody's ever going to care is if this guy is so shockingly honest that it snaps you out of your uh, your malaise and you actually have to pay attention to him. It's it's like yeah. it's like the difference between someone, um, uh, a man standing on the sidewalk yelling at people. Well, you got to pay attention to that guy. As opposed to a man lying on the sidewalk, you know, under a pile of newspapers, you know, slowly dying. Yeah. Um, well, and I then had people the, just walk past. I so. used to when I first like started watching the stuff. I, I would say like, oh, like why do they say it like that? And then I. Pearly does have bags under her eyes, though. Maybe she's not getting enough sleep. Hey, Pearl, maybe you should sleep more. You know, I realized I'm like, oh, it's just how guys talk. But we're so used to being like pants. Don't they have cream for that? I mean, these chicks have magic potions for all this crap. Yeah, she's look. She looks really tired, like she hasn't been sleeping or something. Hundred two. That we're just bad. Bad lighting, or she's she's zooted. <laughs> well, you know, we ask Iridium Kush, who's the expert on being uh, baked. Mister Hemi Four Speed also is a partaker of the Kush. I don't know if she's baked or not. I mean, her eyes don't look all fucked up, but the, under her eyes are really baggy. That's, wow, well, you know, she's probably not getting enough sleep or something. She's not used to, like, the bluntness <laughs> Yeah, so I was, wasn't going to say, but, but yeah. But I yeah. think it's good. I feel like it, I feel like it's, like, overall it's a good thing because then you kind of understand how guys, like, think around you a little mm. bit better. Yeah. And, and keep and in mind, too, the guys get pushback on this. I, I practice a lot of that bluntness in the work I do, and I can tell you there's no shortage of guys out there pushing back on me saying I need to be Warren Farrell instead of... Iridium Kush, Dr. Kush, says, I don't think she's big. I, I would tend to agree. <clears throat> I don't think she's big. <clears throat> she's Maybe she's taking a little bit of something to stay up late to do all these videos or something like that. Now, who just strolled in? Fano Snap Feminism is in the building. Giraffes sleep, like, sleep by laying on a... Oh, oh no. What did he say? Uh, that's just sort of part of the vetting process for men, I oh, think. Oh, Mr. Hirsch, what are you... Oh, the, 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 miso the thick dripping with misogyny in this building oh my god yeah no and and i i have a real hard time with you know when you look at warren farrell i imagine two parents right so you mm. have you have the one parent who calmly and quietly explains to the child you mm -hmm. know why you're having a time out because yep. you you know and why you need to to clean your room or why you need to you know go to school on <laughs> burn the coal uh zelda master I, I didn't say that. I just 
you know, be on time and why you need to do things. And, you know, be, be well, Zombro, you're leaving already. You're going to go to Ruth's Chris and have a, a, a trombone steak with a, a rusty reach around or what, <laughs> what are you doing tonight? Very reasonable and very calm. Look, Black Eagle is in the building. Ginger, ginger monster hamster. Calm and very quiet. And then every once in a while, you need a parent who's just going to put his foot down, right? Mm -hmm. And yep. say, no, this far, no oh. further, smarten up or you're going to get your ass tanned. And I mean, that's the thing though. <clears throat> is I think people, especially younger people, children, whatever, they need boundaries. They need guidelines. This is as far as you go. And they're always going to push the guidelines, right? And so you got to push the guidelines a little farther than you should. And you know you're going to push them. Then they're going to kind of meet in the middle. It's kind of a Donald Trump thing. You know, ask for a whole bunch of, they, they do that. But if there are no boundaries, no guardrails, how far can I, I don't know. What you get is modern females. Because there are no guardrails on the modern whammon. Original Australian is here. Sweet, sweet. F.A. Never gonna take it. <laughs> Yellow Fever Patrol Unit number 95. Easy. Gonna have a blue waffle. Oh, my God. Of course you will. I mean, you cannot have a men's movement populated only by Warren Farrell. Oh, Zombro's running again. All right. Good. All right. Easy has 48 miles to run tonight. Then he's going to go for the steak down at Roots Crest. Or maybe Denny's and have the buffet. I don't you know what he's going to do. the tip of the spear. You need the spearhead of Ooh. people who are rude and mm -hmm. in your face and shocking and blunt and brutally honest, yep. right? To basically soften up the audience to be willing to even listen to yeah. and entertain the position. Can't tell from the muscle tone, shiny aura. Athletic, sedentary, pump speed look. Well, thank you for that, CJ. Uh, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but hey, we'll take it. Go ahead. Go. Editions of the Warren Farrells out there. Because don't otherwise, you know, Warren Farrells is it. never going to get anywhere. Yeah, they say I'm really mean. So. Oh, they all say I'm really mean too. So. <laughs> you guys are cupcakes. <laughs> oh, Sachi Cool. Oh, I don't know if you know her, Sachi Cool. She's a Canadian. Uh, journalist no. uh but she works for uh she was working for buzzfeed and she put me on a netflix special and i sat down for 90 minutes with her and then about 40 minutes into the interview she says well you called me a cunt and i was like did i and what? she's like what? She yeah like six times and i'm like are you and she says are you denying it and i'm like no it sounds like something i'd say <laughs> i just <laughs> it's not outside the normal of karen to to say you're a cunt <laughs> I could see that. Who are these mummies? Grinch, that is Pearly Things, and that's Karen Strong. Girl writes what? An OG in the manosphere. Don't recall. <laughs> I've called a lot. Lord Black Eagle says, I'm drinking the Kraken Spiced Rum Ginger Ale. Mmm. Oh, that sounds like a nice combo there. Yeah, ginger ale or ginger beer with some rum or whiskey. Mm, yummy, yummy, yummy. Go. People cunts. And, uh, and mean, she's like, well, she you cunt? did. Like, like, and, then she, my question. and then I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then she says, well, do you still think I'm a cunt? And I'm... I'm like, yeah, kind of. You sort of, you know? yeah. And I burst out laughing, right? I wish I'd been more on the ball. I would have like looked at my imaginary watch and said, well, we've been here for 40 minutes and you haven't given me a reason to change my mind. So, <laughs> I mean, did you see the hit job that was it BuzzFeed or somebody did on the evil manosphere with Karen Strong? You know, they got her when she was kind of tipsy and like, ah, blah, 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 blah. I'll get my other six pack here. Maybe we'll go and do it. You know, and she just sat there all this goes. through the whole thing looking like she, I just forced her to eat bird poop. It was great. <laughs> My mm. question today, I'm bird curious. Poop. So what is yes. you guys' opinion of feminism as a whole? Uh, it has. Ooh, now we're getting somewhere, boys. All right, listen up. Never not been rotten. Okay. You know, I don't know if I can add anything to that. It's It's been a hate movement from its inception, starting with Seneca Falls all the way up to today. It is populated by a lot of women who have big time issues with men and they express it politically through feminism. I'd say going back further than that, going back all the way to Mary Wollstonecraft, yeah. that she had, if you actually read about her life, she was deeply disturbed, probably borderline personality disorder or bipolar or something like that. Paranoid. Uh, she hated men. Uh, she hated her father. And uh, she 
never got married. She had a child out of wedlock. She tried to kill herself mm -hmm. when yeah. she found that, okay, at this Harry point. Harry craft something or other, right? Yeah, yeah. Point, it's it's difficult to be a single mother, so I'm going to try and coerce the man who impregnated me into marrying me, and he wouldn't do it because she was crazy. <laughs> and so then she tried to kill herself with this. Jeremiah M's is here. Hello, Jeremiah. Six year old or nine year old girl uh, daughter who was depending on her, and uh, because this guy said, "No, I don't want to be married to you," and I'm guessing he was paying her some sort of uh, support, but. It's like I'm I'm looking at that. That is that was the proto feminist that gave birth to what occurred in Seneca Falls. Uh, Mary Wollenstone Craft was what seventeen something, right? Eighty early eighteen hundreds. Yeah, <clears throat> it's been a cancer for hundreds of years, boys. <laughs> It's nothing new. 75 years later. And that, I mean, when you look at that document, the Declaration of Sentiments, and you you read that one line, the history of mankind is a history of repeated usurpations, usurpations yep. and yep. oppressions of by man against woman, uh, having indirect object of the establishment of an absolute tyranny over her, right? Yeah, that, that is the... the uh, <clears throat> Seneca Falls, 1848, the Declaration of Female Independence or something. That is what they were saying. That yep. was their yep. description of the world as mm -hmm. it stood in 1850. And then they just go from there and they make this list <laughs> of all of the ways in which men have wronged women. And mm -hmm. Of course. Mouth Agape Ape is here. Hello. Yeah, David Graham, play through the pain. You're going to have to double fist the beer with one hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll do our best. Uh, let's see. Unless the worst situations have happened, a feminist chose to be a single. Yeah, especially these days. And even back then, you know, if a woman was screwing around, especially when there was no birth control, you, you got knocked up. I mean, you made the choice. So, uh, oops. Of course, none of the ways in which men have done exactly it. Jeremiah. She couldn't even write her own fucking. <laughs> we hold these truths to be self evident that all women are greater than men and evil and right and by women. None of the the sort of the trade offs that were made uh, in terms of yes, men have custody of the children by by default. I mean, like there are ways of getting around that, but fathers have custody of their children by default. But that's because fathers paid. For their children. They mm. weren't the sole people legally mm. responsible for supporting those children. So. But I mean, excuse me, Karen. Why, why didn't women get their own credit cards? Oh my God, the evil. Right? Hmm. I mean, maybe it was because men were legally responsible to fucking pay the credit card. So that's why they had to get the permission of the husband. I know. Let's talk about single women. Could they get their own credit card? I bet they could. Hmm. Yes, twist history. Any way you want it, like a big old barrel of fun. Whatever the fuck you need. Captain Crunch is in the building. Hello, Rusty. They they got them because they paid. Oh, sorry, hey Rusty, I, I've been fucked up here. I haven't sent that uh, present to you yet, but I will. <clears throat> I uh, I was at the store yesterday, and I was going to get stamps, but there was a fucking line and a meth addict in the fucking thing, and I you know I, I'll get it to you. It'll be in a couple of days here. For them. But it doesn't say anything about that. And you mm -hmm. look at all of the ways that they began to dismantle all of those norms, right? Well, men, they switched. They didn't say, ooh, let's go to equal shared custody on the part of mothers and fathers. No, it was custody to the mother, tender years doctrine. But, oh, no reason to touch that um, that whole child support and alimony thing and the father being oh. the sole provider for the, all the necessaries of his children and the head of their household, which is now the mother, right? Oh, no, no reason to look at that. No reason to mm -mm. think about that, right? So, or change any of that. So they really pulled uh, pulled one over on society. And every single thing that they did with Coverture was they, they took away mm -hmm. all of the, all of the handicaps on women, all of the uh, restrictions on and women, on all of the limitations on mm -hmm. women, and yep. handed them everything they wanted, and men. then kept all of yep. the obligation and responsibility mm -hmm. and culpability and all of those things on men. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> I mean, all of that is factually correct. Um, yes. And, and most it, of this shit happened before women got the yeah, so you know. It, it's important to keep all mm -hmm. this in mind, because what you'll hear most common, even from alleged conservatives today, is that 
feminism was a movement with all the right ideas that somehow took a turn south and went in the wrong direction at some point, maybe in the- I mean, I think Kara to be fun to hang out with, Jalen. Yeah. I mean, she's, she, you right. know, I mean, she's, she's still a woman, but, I, you know, she's not horrible. I mean, she'd be fun to have a beer with and, and shoot the show with, I think. Yeah. 1960s or And smoke cigarettes with, right? She's a smoke. Well, she used to smoke anyway. 70s, something like that. Uh, oh, course, that's a fallacy. Feminism was rotten from the beginning. I know that mm -hmm. Karen's right, it predates Seneca Falls, but in Seneca Falls, even, uh, men were invited to attend that convention and sit in the back with their mouths shut from the very. I believe, uh, uh, let's go, oh God, who was the man's name? Now I'm not going to be able to think of it. He was a very, he was a, uh, an activist for black people, escaped slave. Frederick Douglass, even Frederick, Frederick Douglass was caught in 18, well, I can't go there because it's the women. And the dude was, a, he was an ex-slave, right? And the men and women were both slaves, but he was, I don't know, I can't interfere with this conference because, you know, women's are so oppressed. Very beginning. That and was the rules that the women no put way. forth at, at Seneca Falls. It's never been an inclusive movement that was about any kind of justice no. or anything of that sort. It nope. was always about women getting all the power they could and exercising it against men. And this is exactly what we see playing out uh, in the social landscape today and politically and legally uh, across the board. Feminism has poisoned our society uh, mm -hmm. in many ways. Yep. Um, but I think it's also really important not to forget that feminism is one side of a coin. Gynocentrism uh, as a whole Yep. is uh tells a more complete picture because you've got people like our friends at the daily wire and, and other places who are saying they're anti-feminist and then turning around and just parroting all sorts of mm -hmm. adulation and deference to women mm -hmm. and painting women as victims using all the same language that feminism uses just yeah like Ter terrence pop did a video last night or thursday or no it was last night actually with Red Pill Rhino and uh, a couple other people about this whole Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro, you should get married and suck it up, boys, because, you know, reasons and shit. What? <laughs> I mean, God, you know, God bless him. You know, Shapiro has a great marriage. Michael Knowles and, you know, whatever the other guy's name, Matt something, Matt Walsh. Good for them. God bless him. Hope everything goes well. But when it doesn't go well, these gentlemen will figure out what the fuck is going on you don't know anything about divorce guys and a lot of us here have been divorced you know a lot of women have been divorced you don't want to you don't you don't know what it's like you don't know what divorce is like until you fucking are in the courtroom dealing with this shit you will never know until you're there and so thus, it's really easy for the Daily Wire and Ben Shapiro, God bless him, and, and the rest of those guys, oh, well, you should get married anyway, because, you know, it's not that bad of a deal, do you? Mm-hmm. You, have you ever been to divorce court? Oh, you haven't. Well, you might have a different take on it if you have. Go on. From a slightly different angle, and when you object to that, they'll say you're like the feminist it's it's an interesting dynamic but, but, uh, but Paul, that's you're not a you're out. not a real man if you don't get married uh, mm -hmm. absolutely yep. that meme the unfortunately the political right in i think north america if there's a, is there karen is there any more political right in canada that exists anymore yes okay good it's there but what you get from these guys is that they will not talk about changing family law or fixing family nope. law nope they will talk about men needing to get married uh -huh. but the moment men you talk to about step family up. they need to step up and step up to the plate they, you just do the right thing you evil man because we're conservatives change the fucking law guys you know make it more fair oh my god but what's his face in florida ron DeSantis, <laughs> governor hitler what did he do oh my god the poor women are gonna starve to death they're gonna oh my god <laughs> Alimony should not have been, it should not be a thing in 2023. That's fucking bullshit. It's bullshit. Only in the case where the woman didn't work, stayed at home with the kids, got divorced. It's like, okay, give her a helping hand so she can get on her feet. 
Don't give me this fucking both of them are working and there's alimony. Get the fuck out of here. Come on now. Child sport, different thing. Alimony, fuck that. No. <laughs> are you kidding? No way. All right, go ahead. Man up and, and you know, take the hit or whatever. Step yep. up to the plate yep. as fathers, even if they catch fastballs between the eyes. They need to, to step up and do that. And at the same time, mm. they're saying that they're anti-feminist. It's, it's a strange mix. Well, I mean, yeah. I, think, I, think, I think it's interesting, too, to note that I think, wasn't it Ronald Reagan who, who basically passed no fault divorce yeah. in, in California States. the first in California the first state uh, in, uh, yeah yeah and and it's like well okay yeah I can understand having no fault divorce right you know like you don't have to prove that he beat you you don't have to prove mm -hmm. that he raped you you don't have to prove that he uh, was uh, abusive or abandoned the family you don't have to prove any of that you just have irreconcilable differences and you can divorce him, you know, and you can do that unilaterally without having to prove fault. Okay. Okay, good, fine. But then there's a split. That's it. You are no longer entangled except for children. There's no alimony. There's none of that bullshit. That's not how it went, though. Right? Michelle Guevara says, smashy voozy bahantadhanada. There's that Frenchy talk. Okay, so you walk away with your share, a fair share of the marital... Act that seems reasonable, Jeremiah. You know, seems reasonable. I mean, if she wants to punch out, fine. You get nothing. <laughs> it's just simple enough. Assets you know? that you both accumulated during the marriage, and that's it. That's it, right? And you share custody of your kids. Because sure. if it, if no one... If, he, if, if it's no fault, then you're basically uh. saying he's not at fault either, right? So you walk away. You don't have to. You don't have to take him out for the rest of his life. Well, There's, a, you know, like the well, whole lifetime alimony thing. I well, mean, I start. Yeah, what is that bullshit, right? Who came up with that fucking idea? Republicans who often uh, keep that going. So it, mm -hmm. it's infuriating to me where you have alimony. this. Well, what Republicans you in get, bed with feminists, you right? Get it this, for being this married? Super like. awesome bedfellows there. Right. But you know, like Rick Scott in um, in Florida, he twice vetoed a bill that would get rid of lifetime alimony, and and so did DeSantis once, and then he signed it this year. So all right. Uh, at the behest of the National Organization for Women. He, that's mm -hmm. what he did. And it's like... It wasn't just the National Organization for Women. It was the realtors. It was the this. It was the that. It was everybody who makes money off a of fucking divorce. Come on now. Come on. Because he thinks that, you know, a man's place is to be supporting women. And you can think that yes. all you want, yes. right? Yes. And I don't have any problem with that, right? Like I live in a in a marriage right now where my man financially supports the whole household, and I take care of him and you know the home uh, as ineptly as often that is. But yeah, I, Jeremiah Rick Scott is a fucking. I have Yeah. I, I don't. I don't disagree. I look after all of those things. The, I take care of paying the bills. I take care of all the domestic stuff. I take care of all the cooking, and he needs a lot of cooking and all of those things. I, I don't have a problem with even organizing society around those principles. You just can't have a society that's organized around those principles where you pretend that they don't exist and you make laws that don't enforce those principles. You make laws that actually counter uh, counteract those principles. So it's it's like basically we have this thing where it's like a woman can divorce a man in Florida for any reason or no reason at all and mm -hmm. walk away and he has to pay her for the rest of his life and he never gets to retire. Um, his retirement is the day that he pulls out a gun and does that, right? And uh, so it's I, I'm just looking at it and I'm thinking, you know, if you want, if you want, as a traditionalist Republican, right, who believes in gender roles and who believes in, you know, this uh, gender distribution of labor and who believes in, you know, marriage and who believes in all of those, then pick that, pick that and make laws that reinforce that. Right. Don't pick that. Right. In terms of what you're willing to say socially. And then, you know, and then just do a whole bunch of stuff that completely contradicts it and makes it impossible to act. If I can just jump in, the Republicans are all about family values and all this shit. Wouldn't they want families to stay together? Then? <coughs> Wouldn't they want men and women to get married with the kids? 
white picket fence, dog, pickup truck. Isn't that what they say they want? Then why aren't they changing the fucking law? Why do you, why do you think that is, Hampton? Because they don't care. It's a fucking political point. Oh, my God, we're going to win with these. Christian conservatives. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're all for the family. But they haven't done anything to make the family less simple to break apart. Why is that? Again, we're talking about the uniparty here, guys. They don't care about you. They don't give a shit. What they care about is being in power. Although there are, you know, some that actually give a shit about the people that they represent, but not very damn many of them. Actually established in real life. So. But here's the here's Exactly, Rivers. Nobody wants to lose the Whammons vote. And Whammon are currently the majority in the country. Let's fucking put the puzzle together here, guys. Here's the problem that we keep facing with conservatives all the time is that nothing compares to you, Karen. Taysa Fox, why does she look like Sinead O'Connor? I don't know. That's kind of her thing. It's Gary they Strong. Will, again, right? they'll insist that men step up and mm -hmm. volunteer for the abuse. Right. But they will never speak about family courts yeah. because they do not have the spines to stand up to women. It, right. They will not put themselves in a role of being seeing in competition or conflict with women. So they're, all they're left with is you need to get married no matter what, no matter how bad the deal is, no matter how corrupt the courts are, no matter mm -hmm. how lopsided uh -huh. the laws are, you need to step up and do this. And by the way, when you say, well, fix the courts first, they go dead. Mr. Side. Man, you're not fucking wrong. It's the same side. It's the same coin. And they're, it doesn't matter. You know, well, what do we fight about? Oh, abortion. What do we fight about? Oh, gun control. Other than that, they're the same fucking goddamn corrupt fucking politicians. Although the left tends to be a little worse, but are the Republicans really that much better? Think about that. Okay, go go on. I looked. Uh, yes. sorry, I puked all over my microphone. <laughs> I just. I, it's, it's absolutely yeah. the, the hypocrisy and the lack of spine in conservatives over this matter is just staggering. Yeah, well, it's so it's so crazy because I I like you know when I first got into the red pill space, I didn't really understand people's like problem with marriage. I was like, what's the problem? My parents are married. <laughs> <laughs> and then I started like going into I started researching it and I started um, working on my divorce documentary and I had this like realization I'm like a lot of guys would have been better off if they never got married or had kids because I realized I'm like the women will turn the kids against the dad anyways and yeah. who, and God knows who the mom this the baby mother stepmom whatever brings like what dad is or what male she he she or brings parade to, of uncles yeah yeah ex yes. exactly and so I'm like no there's because some of the guys it's like really sad when you talk to them they're like they're they're so like there's just nothing like a guy who who can't see his kids like it's just like the most devastating thing where he'll, he'll be like a mile away from them and he can't see them and he feels so powerless from this court system I'm like fuck if I was a guy I, I don't know if I'd sign up for this mm-hmm Good observation, Pearly. Even if it was just, uh, no. like, because, you know, they'll always try to downplay the stats. Like, they'll try to, like, you know, because I, I would argue that... You just didn't meet the right woman. Yeah. Wait a, minute, wait a minute. Tom Laundry is leaving. You son of a bitch. They'll be like, they'll be like, they'll be like, find a girl that prays. I'm like, have you seen the bitches that pray nowadays? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not trying to be rude, but like, I mean, I I've seen Kate. Like, I I just got to the point where I couldn't find a right woman. Se, I'm putting that comment up there because you're absolutely right. Oh, uh, family values, all this shit. <clears throat> Do you hear any of them coming out? To talk about men's stuff? No. Just the women. Well, we got to do this for the women. We got to take away the tampon tax for the women. We got to do this. We got to get rid of the draft because the women. And oh my God, don't you? Even my guy here in Missouri, what is his name? Uh, Josh something. Well, you know, we can't just because the women, we don't want our little, little daughters to come back in body bags. What about your sons? Don't you give a shit about them? Evidently not. 
one that I hadn't seen fuck over a guy. I'm like, I found the Muslim girl. Ooh, I found right. the Eastern Europeans <laughs> that are supposed to be better. I mm. found like the Russian the shit came girls. over. Here. Yeah, no, it's all of them. I'm like, it's just ice. I'm like, <laughs> and so, you know, it, it just kind of made me realize that shit, like if I was a guy, I wouldn't sign up. The only solution if they really want to bring families together is to switch the courts because it's like, this is two generations of men at least that have been screwed over by this court system. So uh, at least, yes, probably three. Actually. You know, guys are logical. They kind of weigh the pros and cons. They're like, I can't even get two kids out of this anymore. <laughs> they're like, and I have to risk yeah. it all for well, one yeah, point. But they'll hate your guts by the time they're 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no. And, and why would you do it when you've got, you know, casual sex? And I tell my boys, mm -hmm. right, you know, if you're going to oh. engage in that, you bring your own condoms. You don't use the ones she has, right? You bring your own condoms. You use them. Mm, I would recommend mom, Karen. Tell them to not jerk off in a sock. It's going to save you a lot of trouble. Um, you take them into the bathroom afterwards. You rinse them out in the hottest. Yeah, I see. It's probably four. You're probably right. Yeah. Probably since right after the end of World War II. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Delicious Guinness. Go ahead. Water that comes out of the tap and then you throw them in the trash. Don't flush them down the toilet because that's disgusting. And somebody has to scrape all that stuff off of the intake valves at the water treatment center. Okay, so, well, that's fair enough. But the bottom line, Karen, all this shit is wonderful. Don't fuck them in the first place. Okay. Don't do it. Wow, he's just in college. He's going to, he can find himself with a rape charge. Because she feels bad the next day because oh, I had too much to drink and I'd never fuck this guy. Oh, he must have raped me. You know, don't make it hard for other men is basically what I'm saying. But but yeah, you need to protect yourself. And like my sister, when I started making my videos, my older sister, uh, she's six years older than me. I'd be jerking, and off, <laughs> jerking off in a sock if, if my right hand worked, mouth agape. You know. She said she, you know, she had had the talk with her daughter who was, you know, uh, 13 or something at the time. About uh, what I'm saying, mystery man, and I understand because believe it or not, I used to be a young man at some point. I get it. You want to fuck. I, I, I know what I'm saying is don't fuck. Don't have a uh, used condom. Don't do it. Oh, hamster. That's pretty harsh. Uh, Roger, it is. Yeah. You want to wind up in jail on a fucking rape charge? Because someone regretted what she did the night before? Just saying. Okay, go ahead. About, you know, the talk about boys and, you know, staying staying on the straight and narrow and not giving into temptation and not letting... Yeah, sur super Turbo Death Shark. Trevor Bauer's a fucking idiot. I did a video earlier today. The guy's a fucking idiot. Got 200 million fucking dollars sitting there on the fucking contract. What does he do? He goes and he fucks some street skank who accuses him of shit, and he doesn't get that 200 million dollar contract anymore. Just say it. SE Hamster, I remember hearing in the early to mid 70s. What do we got here? Well, she's not yours. It's your turn, late element. <laughs> hmm. Well, they weren't lying. Sir Killa Hayes is in the building. Hello, Killa. What's up, man? Good to see you. Anybody talk you into doing anything you shouldn't be doing and all of that stuff, right? And she says, and then you started making videos and I started realizing I have to have that talk with my boys too. Mm -hmm. And so she's got, you know, his her 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 boys are sandwiched in between two daughters. And uh, and so she gave them the talk about watching out for users, watching out for women who are gonna lie, expect them to lie when they say they're on birth control, expect them to be lying and uh, predict that, you know, they will sperm jack you if they can, you know, because, and maybe only one in a thousand women will do this, but that one in a thousand means a uh, $150,000, 26-year amortized baby mortgage. Mm -hmm. And if she doesn't get a baby out of you, she could accuse you of a rough hay, and your ass could go to fucking jail. Boys, come on now. I think that that speaks to a bigger issue, too, than just marriage. I mean, what we're talking about here is the fundamental lack of trust, trust. That, mm. that we can have, that men can have in women nowadays, because the potential damage doesn't isn't limited to marriage. 
I mean, there's paternity fraud, all kinds of things mm-hmm. that go on all the time between women. Thirty percent of the uh, children born to women in France are not the product of the woman's husband. Thirty fucking percent. Ah, any bells ringing here, boys? Anyone? Anyone? Many states in this country, and if you're overseas, you might not know this, many states in this country, it doesn't matter who makes the baby. If you're married to the woman when she gets pregnant, you're the father. How the fuck? What? How does that work? Jesus Christ, God women and men that this society won't talk about, but it fundamentally boils down to that relationships with, with men who are unconscious about going about them are a very dangerous thing to get involved in. And they can be very dangerous even if you are conscious uh, about and, what's going on. And the hypocritical thing too is that, you know, when they talk about paternity fraud and okay, so, you know, she had the milkman's kids, but you know, he was Mm. their dad and he raised them as his own and he didn't even know they weren't his until, you know, he found out when one of the kids needed a kidney or something like that. Mm. And Maddie, I says that number isn't accurate. Need to ready the study, redo the study. Okay. Michelle Guevara says, no, in France, it's 43% of children born, I guess, to married couples are not the child of the father in the marriage. 43%, guys, come on now. Didn't uh, Francois, whoever the fuck is in charge of France, well, you know, we we should make a law to, uh, you know, enforce that, but then the country would be torn apart, you know, so we can't do that, you know. Hey, uh, so there's nothing like that here. Wait a minute, that was Quebec. <laughs> That was more Quebec, I believe, but uh, yeah, you get the idea. And, you know, oh, you know, so across the French, you're like, oh no, no, we can't. We we know all these women are doing this shit, but we can't do anything about it because reasons and stuff. And and well, we're French, uh, Hollywood, fucking Francais. But I mean, it, it shouldn't matter. Is that right, Grinchy? Sorry to hear that, man. Jesus, that's that's crazy. Wow. Matter DNA shouldn't matter. And I'm I'm looking at this, these two women in uh, France about ten years ago, whose babies were switched at the hospital, and they got like two and a half million euros in compensation for that because they discovered it when their daughters were fifteen. That you know, mm-hmm. and they loved their daughters, but it mattered. The DNA mattered to them. Each of them went home with a daughter. It shouldn't DNA shouldn't matter. Yeah. Well, apparently it matters to women. So what is gynocentrism? I'm starting to learn. Like, is that just like putting women on a pedestal, essentially? That's one mm. definition. I think it's a, a long standing for about the past thousand years since the, <clears throat> what am I looking for? The advent of romantic chivalry blended with our natural biological predispositions. But it basically boils down to women matter, men don't. Everything about women matters. Their health matters more. It's why we have a, a department on women's health in the government and, and nothing for men. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's why the courts are biased. It's why the relationship rules are rigged to disadvantage men from the beginning. Uh, We are supposed to be like seals clapping our flippers together Uh, for a piece uh, of fish and balancing a beach ball on our nose in order to win the, the favor of women. Uh, I mean, there's a million different ways that gynocentrism is expressed, but mm-hmm. I think that really does sum it up. It's just about women being elevated uh, in importance over men in all yeah, matters. I, I think I think when when you look, because I I look at it uh, less from a sociological or historical context and more from an evolutionary biological context, and I think that when it comes to patriar- patriarchy and gynocentrism are effectively uh, fed by the same core impulses uh, that are determined by our wetware, right? So this is our operating system. It's not the software that, it's not the apps that we install afterwards, you know, culture and stuff like that. The apps can be very bad. And I think that modern gynocentrism is very much a set of really toxic apps, but this is a fundamental operating system. Uh, it's the it's what got us through the pla- Pleistocene, the mass extinction during the Pleistocene, um, which is patriarchy is basically the recognition of of paternity and gender roles, right? Gender division of labor in in terms of patriarchy is is the ring of 
soldiers and hunters that surrounds the village and gynocentrism is the women who are kept safe within that village to get down to their job of producing more people right of of producing offspring so when you look at when you look at it in that way you can see it as something that is actually it's it's evolutionarily it makes sense it's you know it's why six other hominid species went extinct during the Pleistocene, um, the Neanderthalers being the most famous, they didn't have a gender division of labor. Men, women, and children all engaged in big game hunting, and their skeletons have the fractures to prove it, right? Female, male, and child. So you're looking at, you know, once they came across, and they didn't have any domestic arts at all, other than what they borrowed from from us. So basically, what you're looking at is something that is actually really, really well established to promote survival, uh, to promote community uh, cohesion, right? This gender division of labor, that the gender roles for men and women, men protect humans, women produce humans, right? And that's just that's just how it works. And it worked really well. Then you got into all of these stages where well, we can give women a little bit more freedom. Oh, well, we can give women a little bit more power. Oh, we can give women a little bit more choice. We can give women the ability to say no when their husband says duck or hide. But we're going to still hold him responsible if she takes an arrow to the chest, right? Oh, that's the big thing, though, there, isn't it, Karen? No, no, no. We want women to have all these extra goodies because, you know, oppression and the patriarchy and shit. But they shouldn't be held responsible for that. We should put the women guarding the castle with their arrows and quivers and all that stuff. But we can't hold them accountable for actually doing the fucking job as a poor analogy. Well, if you do that, you're just an evil misogynist. Oh, my God. I, we want to be equal, but not, like, not that equal. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's fucking bullshit. It's all bullshit. Anyway, um, go ahead he's still the one to blame because he couldn't protect her, right? Even mm -hmm. though she didn't have to obey him. And so, I mean, you're looking at all of these corruptions of these very deeply ingrained impulses that we have that we're born with that are very hard to purge. This is why it's taken 150 years or more for men to actually start defending themselves. Uh yeah, Mystery Man, they probably did nag about 40% of men or 50% of men to death Back in the caveman days. Oh, yeah, the women were good at bitching. They always have been, always will be. Against feminism and against this campaign of anti-male hate is because they have, it, it's counter to their natural impulses, which are to protect and provide for mm -hmm. women, you know, mm -hmm. because that's yeah. the best way to protect and provide for their offspring, right? Their, yes. their own offspring. Yes. A shot of whiskey is here. Hello, whiskey. Good to see you. Put your channel in the uh, chat there, sir. Uh, same with you, Rusty. You have a channel, Rusty? Rusty Rivers. Captain Crunch Critter. C Captain Crotch. Uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing. All right, go ahead. And their communities. So it's like mm -hmm. you, you look at it and it's, it's just this massive hijacking of massive corrupt hijacking of mm. our natural impulses that are in my opinion, pragmatic and morally neutral. And we've just changed them and changed them and changed them and changed them and always to ease up the rules for women. And then somebody has to yep. pick up that slack. So the rules get more, more harsh on men, you know, and like back in the day, uh, when um when you had uh if a woman was raped it was at least against the law right and it was against the law because she might end up with a baby right that's basically the reason it was against the law she might end up with a baby that did not that was bo would be born that would disadvantage her and it would be disadvantaged and all of that because no father you know around to support them and all of that stuff right it's not even just not a crime to lie about birth control it's written into canadian law mm. that a woman who sabotages or lies about birth control cannot be prosecuted for nope. sexual assault. And that was written into a decision finding a man who poked holes in the condoms guilty of sexual mm -hmm. assault. I'd like to back up a little bit and respectfully push back on some of that. I 
don't agree with the biodeterminism oh, in this okay. at all. Um, social customs around men and women have evolved and changed for centuries. There is, it's hard for me to imagine a significant number of men, which we're starting to see nowadays, even having the opportunity to go red pill if if this is so biologically determined. Uh, I, I don't I don't I get think that. It's and, just and, got, and I don't I, think it serves us as a model because it, it takes choice out of the hands of men. I mean, factually, I think it's incorrect because we just have so much social history around gynocentrism uh, and its evolution uh, in socially with human beings that I mean, predating romantic chivalry, courtly love, uh, people didn't even get married for love. They got married for practicality. And, yeah, and that for was economic all reasons. True, true that. But yeah. I just, I mean, I, in the end, if a guy ends up in a place where he understands some model, some understanding of gynocentrism and can use that, that model or that knowledge to protect himself, I, I think he's in good shape. But I prefer. Oh my God, Master Wrench is leaving. All right, SCE, have a good night. Good to see you, man. God bless. Next time. All right, we'll see you later. All right, go ahead. Uh, a little bit more personal control over my desk. When did this video come out? Um, I don't know. Uh, I just found it today, so I don't know whatever the date. It's on the link though, if you want to look at the whole thing. So, got you again? Even biology would allow. Me. It's in the oh like, yeah, no, way. I'm I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that this is something that's written in stone. I'm saying that people have to have a meta awareness of what's going on in order to curtail their own impulses and their own even you know, even. Even I, even I have a problem. You remember the the Egyptian woman in the blue bra? Remember that video? Yep. Even I was horrified by that. And I had to watch it a second time to see what was going on with the men around and how they were getting much more brutally beaten. And lots of MRAs uh, left comments under that video where I talked about it. And they said they, went, they didn't even realize that the men who were getting beaten in the same frame, right? were completely, they, they were completely oblivious to those men. And then they had to go back and watch and see how much more brutally those men were being treated by Egyptian police than that one woman, right? And they had to go back and watch because they were like, oh no, she was like absolutely brutally stomped. When in reality, the moment her burqa fell open and they realized, oh, there is actually a woman under here because a lot of men in the Middle East will put on a burqa to make trouble because women are supposedly off limits for for state violence that they uh they realized that the moment her burqa fell open and and it was clear that that she was a woman one of the cops pushed another cop was like in the process of jumping and you know going to kick her and he pushed her away and pushed that cop so, away wait, so i have a question so are, are you saying paul you're saying you don't think it's biological gynocentrism i think there's biological elements to it absolutely yeah. i don't, yeah, I don't I think, think so. we can yeah. deny that but yeah. i i think we also to just identify oh, it as a biological mechanism alone i think misses uh, the point okay you you so, no you so, can't you can't capitulate to it. I mean, like it is biological in the sense that women want what they want when they want it, and as much as they can get. You know, like yes, social norms between men and women have changed through the centuries and all of that, right? But what what's always the core pattern, right? Think men make the environment safe, uh, and then women decide they want to go outside, and then they demand their men let them go outside, they demand their men let them have freedom, so the men say okay, and then they, the women demand more and more freedom, and more and more autonomy, and more and more agency, and more and more ability to make their own decisions, and not have to be obedient, or not have to like capitulate to any kind of restrictions, and uh, and then boom, yeah, now you collapsed. can be a fat whore and still be a wife, and and then and then we're <laughs> Back, Excuse me. Then we're back to not have to <clears throat> follow any societal norms because you know that would be uh, oppression. <clears throat> that was chunky. Societal norms, you know, guideposts, guardrails. No, that's oppression. I mean, this shit goes back a lot farther than what we think. But uh, anyway, go ahead, Pearl. Talk to us, redhead. Subsistence living where women actually have to be obedient. Oh, that's a good comment there, Kush. I'm putting you up on the screen here. That Excellent. Read that. Read that. Obedient to their husbands because they actually really depend on their husbands and that things aren't safe and nothing's plentiful and 
everybody's starving. And and, and this uh, is so why Cato the Elder said 2,000 years ago, if you make women your equals, they'll become your masters. That's right. right. So um, you said before 1,000 years ago, there was no romantic love. I, there, I'm oh, saying there, the, the I'm whole sure there was idea. Romantic love. I mean, there was yeah. infatuation, I think, that always has it, the release of oxytocin, uh, chemical yeah. infatuation. I mean, can I just say one thing about what Kush wrote here? There's a reason why this is going on. And I think we all know it, Kush, don't we? Gynocentrism is a multi-trillion dollar market. Why? Well, if we have a lot of single women, we can sell twice as many fucking houses. We can sell twice as many fucking cars. We can rent twice as many fucking apartments. You can't tax motherhood. There's a reason why all this should happen. It's not just, oh, women should be free. And the wages can be kept down to a moderate increase because we have twice the fucking labor force. It's not that hard, really. But thank you, Kush. Appreciate that. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Bonding between human beings was always there, but it was regarded as a form of insanity generally social <laughs> and and people saw no reason the idea of getting married based on that i mean all i'm saying kush and everybody is there's a lot more shit going on in the background that we don't see here in the foreground you think the real estate fucking lobbies and shit don't want this to continue you think well, we could sell twice as many houses. We could sell them for twice the price because we have more fucking buyers, etc. Okay, here's what what does Kush say here? The core philosophy of MIGTO is to avoid contributing in time and money as much as possible to the gynocentric market. Thank you. But Kush, we still have to have a place to live. We still got to drive a car, and all this shit is double the fucking price it should be. Because women are free. Oh my God! Infatuation would be was considered absolute insanity. It just yeah. Didn't your parents happen. would be so disappointed. It, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but then uh, a woman, Eleanor of Aquitaine, her daughter Marie, commissioned troubadours, uh, spread the word of romantic love and its elevation above all other forms of love, um, and it caught on. And it's it has come to be our standard ever since. Yeah, no, and and what I find interesting about that too is that it's elevated above all other forms of love, including the love of God, which you know, and love of king. Atheist, yeah, even as an atheist, right? I I can say you know for the time that was a pretty ballsy statement, and really, really, I I can't even imagine how she wasn't like strung up on a rack. I mean, wasn't weren't they still well, burning witches and stuff? It's because William, um, her uh, her her father, I, I believe her father or grandfather, grandfather, um, was I think the world's first simp, uh, carrying an image of his mistress on his shield into battle, uh, and he was what inspired them. They grew up watching him simp for all the women in his court. Uh, and they turned it into a cottage industry that mm -hmm. spread throughout the world. And is that where, cause I, I had this thought wondering if proposals were almost gynocentric because, or like, oh, yeah. I was thinking more like feminist because the guy's like going below the woman. And I, I never, I never thought about it. It's like kind of what he's on his knee. Yeah. I was like, he's <laughs> on his knees begging <laughs> yeah. her to wow. be his, economic dependent for the rest of his life and he's purchasing her with a ring that cost him three months salary well and even i had a thought i started googling the average price of a wedding and i was thinking about how the price of weddings has gone up but the value of brides is like so low because I, I mean what is it thirty five thousand dollars average wedding price? are you fucking kidding me you're gonna spend 35 grand on a wedding, it's probably about 70 grand with inflation. When you could take that money, put it down on a house for your family. No, 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 no. 
No, no, no. I, I oh. had this thought where, because I got into the red no. pill and they're like, what modern women bring nothing. And I'm like, what do you mean we bring nothing? And, and then I started going through the stats and I was like, oh shit, we've like, as a group, one out of three of us has had an abortion. One out of three has an STD. I'm like, we have like one point something kids. I'm like, God damn, this is not good. We're, we're the- and a lot of modern women are just fucking garden tools. They're just fucking hoes. Men don't want that, but they don't care. The government wants that to happen, or else it wouldn't be happening. Oh, Matty I says, just spent $35,000 on our win. $35,000 on fucking crab cakes and champagne. You could take $35,000, drop that into a fucking house. No, no, no. That would make the woman unhappy. Because reasons, oh my God, oh no, oh no. With a shout out to Aaron Clary. There's lots of women who want to get married and have families. There's very few who want to be wives and mothers. Yeah. Yeah, that that was really the, the thing, you know, like it, it wasn't hard for me to find my first husband, uh, you know. I mean, I just want the party. Oh my God, the party, <laughs> oh no. Mm-hmm. Find a man who is willing to actually go into a marriage. Yeah, Thanos snap feminism. Lease never buy. Hmm. Uh, I would have to agree. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you're buying a car. Oh my God, I'm gonna go out and get the new 2024 hamster mobile from Kia. Don't buy it. Lease it. And what do you mean? But it's not my car. Who gives a shit? They take care of all the fucking maintenance, and if it breaks, you get another one. Fuck that. I'm not buying a car unless it's a cheap motherfucking car that I can fix up myself. But hey, now, go on. It's a very traditional. Wait a minute. Just some random guy showed up. <gasps> oh, no. My mic is doo doo. Yes, it is. Yeah. No, actually, it's not vintage uh, random guy. It's uh, this fucking Microsoft headphone, Bluetooth shit. Just doesn't have the bandwidth for our. You know, liking. I think it sounds like garbage. But uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, marriage, right? With, with stay-at-home mom, uh, at least in as much as possible financially. And um, even when I went back to work, uh, our kids never went to daycare. Uh, they were never with a babysitter. They, you know, uh, I just now hold on. Now we have Doctor Iridium Kush in the building here. He's an investment person as well. I mean, Kush, you can take thirty-five grand, make something out of that, right? Instead of just <laughs> pissing it away on champagne and fucking crab cakes. <sighs> oh my god! Just some random guy says it sounds like old radio. I think it's cool. Well, okay, I, I'm glad you like it. I prefer my beautiful magical voice on a big old, a big old nice microphone. God, took god. jobs that were god. on opposite shifts from my husband and he sure. stayed home one of us was home with them and uh and you know i did a whole bunch of really traditional things uh around the house you know i cooked from scratch i bought cloth diapers that you have to hold fold and pin you know i i rescued and refurbished furniture i did everything i possibly could to uh squeeze every bit of value out of every single penny so that i could afford to stay home and all right, Pickles McGee says you can write off some lease payments through the. Hold on. You can write off the lease payments through some LLC. Okay, well, I mean, Kush can tell us this stuff because he knows this stuff. Yeah. Kushy is here, by the way. One reason I never got married, I thought outside the box, thought away. Yeah. Good call, man. Good, good call. That's why you have the PhD. <laughs> oh, my God. Go ahead. Uh, but. You know, it's it's very, very difficult, I think, to find uh, a woman these days who would be willing to not just do all of those things domestically, including being the handyman around the house and things like that, plunging your own toilet and and all of those things. I'm your handyman. What? No, where's my beer? Hold on. Because this is what, you know, I was basically a farm wife living in a small town. Mm. Um, But uh, it's, it's hard to find a woman like that. And, uh, and it's hard to find a woman who's, who's willing to actually commit to that lifestyle, right? Like, so uh, to find one comp, you, you can't even find a woman who can cook these days half the time, right? 
you know, they know how to microwave a lean cuisine. That's about it. And um, yeah, like they, and they, and one who's willing to commit long-term, right? Like long-term, at least until the kid. Well, gosh, you should have a PhD. You have an honorary PhD from uh, my non-existent PhD. Congratulations, Dr. Kush. You are a PhD. Are basically growing. <laughs> and uh, next to impossible to find somebody who actually wants to do those things. Um, it was not hard for me to find a man who wanted to live that way. Yeah, it that's what, that's what I found, too. But there's, Go ahead. There's been a positive in that, though, in that... Uh, you know, in my household, I'm in a relationship of 21 years now, very happily connected in that way. But uh, I I am the cook in the house because I don't want to eat inferior food. Um, <laughs> that's that's what my oldest says. He says oh, uh, he's the oh, cook because uh, oh, no. he and my uh, daughter live together. <laughs> they share a duplex. And, oh, God. Um, oh, no. Because they're, they're like 15 months apart. Like, they're just like uh joined at the hip kind of and um but yeah he does all the cooking because he wouldn't eat the, the swill that rachel makes so but you know yeah. something i i gotta say and I, and I hope women someday wake up to this if you can be replaced by somebody who can push a broom and use a skillet mm. maybe you're not bringing enough to a relationship <laughs> yeah yeah no if he can if he can pay uh, $200, $300. Moon says, num some moms are not good at cooking. Well, a lot of people aren't good at cooking, but, you know, I mean, we all have to, at some point, figure out how to cook. But these bitches, you know, these all fucking, I ain't going to cook for them. Okay. Fine. Man, they're good. Have a, have a good time. We don't care. <laughs> oh, my God. Eric Zombro is here again. You've run your 48 miles today. Good to see you, man. Pull out that uh, throbbing uh, uh, steak thing you you like. There's a week that to one, have somebody come in and do those services, including the dick sucking. Um, Whoa, the dick sucking. Uh, Zombro, you're a good cook, are you? All right, what are you going to make tonight? What's on the menu? What's on the agenda? We're going to have one of the tomahawk fucking, you know, you're just going to put a cow on the grill. Come on. 5.8 miles and Jameson Irish whiskey. Slancha. Slancha. I love Jameson. It's once a week. Nectar of the gods. Uh, then, you know, like. Chicken Kiev. Oh, my God. Oh, you put you support the. Uh, well, you know. What are you doing? Okay. Chicken Kiev. Is that like chicken with like ham and cheese and shit in there? Uh, nice. Very Benjamin Life says, a new uh, viewer of this monstrosity we call a live stream. Very Benjamin Life, have a male housemate who doesn't plunge the toilet when he clogs it. It's like he doesn't know how or something. Well, yeah, I lived with two or three roommates back in college. Yeah. Mm. You don't ever want to live with your friends because it's it turns into a bad a bad scene, I say. Why are you here? Right. You, you have to, you have to actually bring some kind of, and you know, sex is part but, of that, of course, so, because, um, a, no, no man gets married just praying that he'll never have sex again. Yeah. Well, that was um, the, that was like a red <laughs> pill too. I was like, are these wives not sleeping with their husbands? I was like, what? It's oh, so, I didn't realize how common oh, it was. Like I started interviewing these guys in divorce and it was always like the same story. It was like, oh, she, it was like an accidental pregnancy early on. Then he marries her and then she just stops sleeping with him after the kids. Now, oh, we're going to interrupt this program to bring you a special announcement. What the fuck is sour broughton, Sergeant Grinch? It's like pork with uh, potatoes and, and, and noodles or what, what is it? What is sour broughton? Just uh, go ahead and think about that and let us know uh, what it is because we'd like, like to know. Yeah. Still stop sleep. Sure about that, Zombro. Chicken, cheese, and rice. Mm. I thought there were some ham slices in there. You know, uh, chicken cordon bleu. 
Or was that a different thing? Uh, uh, what happened with what? him? He'll go sexless for three years. You can't cook it because you're a man. And then she'll wig out because she finds out he's looking at porn. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's that's the insane. Sour beef roast. Okay, so it's got sauerkraut and beef, maybe some potatoes. Okay. Right. Sounds good. All right. Anything. Yeah. yeah, no, this this madam in Australia, she wrote a piece in, I think it was a city <laughs> I just ate dinner and I'm hungry. I Kush, is there any reason why? Maybe. <laughs> just say, just say. Harold or something like that. Where she basically was saying, wives, be better, right? Because she says, she, she wrote that half of her escorts, right, when they go on a date, there's not even any sex. They lie in bed with the guy and cuddle and he tells them all of his heart's deepest secrets across the pillow because he can't safely disclose those things to his wife. He does not feel safe to do that. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. So these guys are paying like $200 an hour for somebody to talk pillow, to. <laughs> pillow therapy. Oh my gosh. Do you know what I started asking guys? I'd be like, okay, if you're on a first date and a girl just said to you, I don't know anything. I know nothing, but I'm willing to learn. Would you go on another date with her? They're all like, yeah, that sounds amazing. <laughs> I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I, would, I would shit test her a lot more than that. <laughs> Yeah, well, but you go, you go on a no, but I was, date. I, I know, but I was so just could, thinking, yeah. I was just thinking, like, wow, that's like the bar is so low. They're like, I can teach her. She listens. That's it. <laughs> like, well, I tell you what, that's more than a lot of guys get. Yeah. yeah. Do you think feminism was responsible for the breakdown of relationships today, or do you think it started before that? Syner I think it's a synergism of sort of the. the modern day simp and feminism. I mean, it's really easy to point the finger at feminism. It's such a corrupt ideology uh, practiced by very corrupt, selfish, narcissistic, often personality disordered people. <clears throat> so it's an easy target and it's certainly deserving of the criticism that it gets. Uh, but I think that the, the social gynocentrism that we practice today, the, the, the way men just capitulate to, to totally disrespecting themselves, life on their knees, groveling before women. That is a really big problem. I would argue worse than feminism. Wait, so yep. just quick, can I have a couple examples of that? Well, I, mm, I yeah, think that yeah, um, yeah. I'll give you a, a, a short sure. story as an example. I was furniture shopping with my partner a few years back, and we were picking out a new sofa for the living room. And the Excuse me, my partner? Mm. Okay. All right. Salesman happened to be an African American man. I'd say in his mid forties. Uh, had a uh, actually uh, Shar Shar Osnababalo with dumplings. I love dumplings. Where is Paul's kebab? Because I keep asking him about uh, pierogi. He's telling you I don't like pierogi. Uh, fuck you. Yeah, I am hungry actually, Mister Hemi Four Speed. I've got a frozen turkey dinner in the refrigerator that I'm going to enjoy after this. I'm going to put some extra butter on there. I got some of that European butter with the high butter fat. Put that in there. Maybe some broccoli. And, oh, that actually sounds pretty good. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do that. So I, I will be eating here shortly. A crucifix on his lapel. But you know, just because I'm a man to sacrifice for the moment. I got a broken arm that's falling off, and I'm going to eat turkey in a minute, but we're going to continue the stream. Oh, nice Armani suit, very sharp dress guy. And he's showing us around, and three or four times he made reference saying, we all know who's making the decision here, don't we? Yeah. His, his implication was that I had no voice in this purchase that I was about to make, that I had to defer to her. And I finally turned to him and said, you know, Oh, he's playing, he's playing GTA 5 with chaos. Okay, <clears throat> well, tell him he should tell me where to get the best pierogi in uh, Chicago. He, he hates me. He hates, oh, man, what fucking pierogi? There's going to be a whole lot. doesn't mean I know pierogi. Oh, my God. Okay. You know what? That's not how it works here. Yeah. And he was shocked. He was yeah. absolutely stunned that I said something like that. That's one of 10 million examples. Man, if you want to see... Simping, go on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> You'll see it everywhere. And, Guys yeah. running to the rescue of the most vicious 
nasty hoes you can possibly imagine, guys rushing in to defend her honor and to defend all women's honor. Paul, but she prays. It's something you can actually do. But it's she absolutely But I mean, mystery man, you know, some broccoli, <clears throat> maybe some maybe some peppers, cauliflower in there. Mm, I'm telling you, I like I like to eat the veggies. Because, you know, that's why I'm not dead and I'm 59. So, you know. Be disgusting. Reasons. It's the phrase. most disgusting. Uh, to me, All these right. guys are worse than men who, who actually. Oh, my God. Bengus is here. <gasps> oh, my God. Abuse women. And they're much more common. Much more common. You think they're worse than men that abuse women? Yes, I do. I think they do more damage yeah. uh, in what they ro role model to young men, uh, to boys, and to girls. Uh, in terms of what their expectations are of men, they set future men up. See that? Now that's what I'm talking about, Zombro. That sounds like an Italian. Are you Italian? Broccoli, a little garlic, oil with lim linguine, maybe a little Parmesan on there. But uh, oh, baby, that sounds good. <laughs> you know, I think I've changed my mind. Maybe I'll do something else. Thank you. Yeah, a little. Uh, mm -hmm. I have some mushrooms too. Huh. Yeah, I got some linguine. I know I have linguine in here. And I've got garlic, olive oil, like real olive oil from California. Well, they tell me anyway, it's all oil from California. I got butter and I've got stuff. So it's going to be great. You have to emulate that behavior in order to stay in good social graces. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, and I think, I think that, yeah, no, I think because the reason that it is, the reason it's more dangerous, the reason it's more uh, insidious is because it is considered the socially appropriate way for men to, to behave. Um, you know, everybody, everybody is horrified when a man strikes a woman, when a man hits a woman. Everybody is. Like, there's no normalizing that. You go back 100, 200, 400, 500 years. Nobody liked it when that happened, right? Nobody at all. Not even the Catholic Church in the 1450s, right? Um, they did not like spousal abuse. They did not like anybody, any man raising a hand to any woman. Um, it was just not something that was considered socially acceptable. People would turn and look away. They would pretend not to see it, but they had to turn and look away from it. They weren't saying, yeah, yeah, you tell her how it is. Hit punch her again. They weren't doing that. They weren't doing that. Excuse me, Zombro. What do you what do you mean English and German food is horrendous? Oh my god. No, 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 no. I want one of those big English breakfasts like tomorrow or an Irish breakfast or a Scottish breakfast. So I don't want the haggis. But that's good. Give me some of that German sausage with eggs in the morning. Oh, come on now. Come on, don't be a fucking racist. Oh, you evil Zombro, you. Right? Right but now, they'll freak right. out if you disagree with a woman. Yeah, yelling is abuse well, now. I guess that's what Crowder was just abusing his wife. You know, all the or the silent the silent treatment is also spousal abuse. By and men gaslighting. I learned He's this. I'm refusing like refusing to talk to her. <laughs> yes. Oh, isn't that stonewalling? Isn't that what they say? <laughs> oh God, yeah, yeah. Oh, bacon wrapped asparagus. Oh, asparagus is a lovely food. I love it. It's delicious. Good evening. Who what? Shot of whiskey. Okay, plants here. Hello. All right. Who has got the best recipes while well, we're all talking about food here? Because I'm hungry. Uh, I've got, uh, let's see, we got German, Italian. We've got uh, Zombro. <laughs> That's a whole different ballgame. Thanos, snap, feminism, wait. Let me uh, find that. All right. Here we go. Gynocentrism is the standard operating procedure of feminism. Take fathers out the home. Men can only raise men. Take a look at the black community. The women run the community. How's that working out? Well, you know, uh, we got, uh, you know, Killer Hayes in here somewhere. Killer Hayes can probably tell us about how that's working out in the com community. These psychologists oh, yes. make up these like crazy terms. I'm like, what the hell? That sounds it's... like a good a term as any. I haven't heard stonewalling, but I don't doubt that they're using it because they, you can take any normal form of behavior. Yeah. What I heard though is Rusty Crap, Captain Crunch, <clears throat> he tortures the blue crabs before he eats them. 
Son of a bitch. Oh my God. <laughs> Stop it now. Oh my God. And, men, and it will be called abusive. And the opposite of that behavior will be called ab abusive too. So it's just, it really doesn't matter. Well, and it's interesting. I, I didn't under, I think the first time we talked, I was like, wow, this guy really hates sim. But it's weird. It's like, yeah. once you, once you like see it, you can't unsee it. Or you're like, shit, they're just like lying. Like women, it's like, okay, we're just such idiots. I mean, I, like, I mean, not all of us, but a lot, like we just believe damn near anything. It's so crazy. But it's like the guys, like... Uh, they know so i'm like why are you lying like they'll come on my show and say they like women that have slept around they'll come on the show and say there's nothing wrong with their 37 year old sister who's never dated anybody and i'm just like well, like you know that's not true like why and it's just like once you see it you just can't kind of like do i hate well, look at all the people that say women can do anything men can do which is oh, God. patently untrue it's it's so untrue that it's it's laughable laughably untrue and the whole of society will nod their heads like bobbleheads oh yeah no when barack obama said a woman can do anything a man can do uh and better and in heels and everybody's like oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> and i'm just like are you are you freaking kidding me get up there in that cherry picker and fix that power pole bitch <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I played sports, so like uh, I'm like, you realize how much stronger dude. Hmm. I have to say, Jeremy Hirsch, that's pretty. That looks pretty good. Bacon wrapped chicken with uh, cheese, rice, and broccoli. Oh yeah. Oh God, stop it. I'm gonna. I'm. Hmm. Excuse me. I, I need a moment. Dudes are. I'm like. Yeah. I'm like top one percent. If you look at how tall I am, strength. Yeah. It's probably similar. I could deadlift like three. Now, Obama was full of shit. Shot of whiskey. Come on. Anyway, we're not talking about politics tonight. We're talking about recipes in the chat. <gasps> uh, just random guy says a 45 millimeter dick up your ass. No, no, no. no. I, uh, mm, come on now. 300 pounds. That's, that's a lot <laughs> for a chick. But for a oh, chick, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like a, even an average guy can out bench me. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's not. <laughs> and it's like I've trained 16 years to out bench or out deadlift like i don't know a yeah i mean she's a strong girl right she's a strong athletic woman and a, a six foot per i guess she's tall right so a a man of her size six foot or whatever she has no chance now that's misinterpreted by the fembots as well you hate women because why do you say that no 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 it's it's biology it's reality it's nothing against women it's nothing against the athletes who compete. They just can't. Men are fucking bigger. They're huger. They got bigger muscles and hearts and all kinds of shit. It doesn't matter what these people fucking say. They don't care. They have an idea in their mind, and they're just going to make that happen. A couple guys, maybe, who don't train yeah. and are obese. Like, <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Frosty River is going to fly. You're going to do a turducken for us on Thanksgiving, which is only... What, a month and a half away? <laughs> We're going to do a turducken, okay? We're going to do it on your boat, because that'd be really fucking cool, man. All right, super turbo death shark. All right, go on. All right, my fucking right hand is, is blowing out here, so we'll, we'll try it here. Cut chicken into chunks, fry it in oil, base Caesar dressing until the dressing it cooks now to oil. Oh, well, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. All right. Do you put any greenery in there just for fun? No? <laughs> no, no. No, actually, lettuce or anything? Okay. All right. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> and it's like you're looking at the Canadian uh, Olympic uh, women's hockey team. You know, they spar with um, not even midget AAA. But I, I can't believe Rusty Rivers, the Captain Crunch of the Crunchers, he's going to cook us a turducken. This Thanksgiving. I mean, is that a promise there, Rusty? Or are you gonna yeah, are you gonna bail out of that? I mean, geez, a turducket in Louisiana from Rusty. Uh, basically the up to 15 year old category. Well, right, mid triple these latest women 15 do. to 18. And uh, they practice with them and they routinely lose. The Australian women's soccer team, they because it's not about reality, Iridium Kush, you know that. <laughs> Reality is irrelevant to the, the, the movement. The, the, you know, you know, 
you know. train. They they train against uh, fifteen and under boys teams, and they routinely lose. Well, and they, all they do is and, complain. They whine about the pay. When I'm like, you're lucky to even have a league. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you I, I they, like, they complain about the pay that they're actually getting by siphoning off of men's sports, which is exactly yeah. what happens. That is, I literally said, I was like, if I was the guys, I would just cut it because I was like, they all we do is complain and bitch about the pay. I'm like, I now wait a minute, Rusty. <clears throat> when you're talking about turducken, we're talking about the turkey, and then we got a, a duck, we got a chicken all wrapped together to bake on Thanksgiving Day or roast. Excellent. Mm, I can't wait to come down and eat your turducken. I would just cut it. I would just Excuse me. It. Don't take that as a sexual thing. Do you want to bitch about it? And I, I love to sport. eat your turducken. Oh, my God. But I'm like, no one's watching it. Yeah, well, and and the, the idea that you're going to get – the idea that you're going to get male fans of – But, I mean, the thing is, though, even Thanksgiving, uh, New Orleans Saints are not going to win shit because, you know, that's the way it is. You know, it's going to be the fucking Vikings or something. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Just Like a White Winged Dove, sing a song just like a pigeon. Ooh, ooh, roasted pigeon. All right, <clears throat> I think I'm getting the message, so we'll do one more here. Anyway, the link is in the description if you want to look it up. So, okay, let's go here. All right, oh, Jesus. Tur oh, God. Now I can't, I can't even drive this fucking thing, guys. So, <laughs> sorry. My fucking hand is killing me. Hold on one second. Um, turducken. Turducken. Cook. Boo boo. It's really a bitch to have to do only one hand in here. <clears throat> the 810 pound cooks at 375, three hours. Okay. All right. Share this stream instead. View tab. Go ahead. There we go. All right. How do I cook my turducken? Cajun ad specialty meats. Okay, do we have a video on this, by the way? Let's see if we can find Krusty Crunch Rivers, how to cook a turducken. <laughs> we got to find out how to cook it. Oh, it's Food Network. Here we go. All right. Okay. Can you see that? Okay. All right. There's, is that, what's his face with the thing? All right. Yeah, uh, it's Dutter's. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, called yeah. a turducken, just one of the handmade, yeah. homemade specialties. Here we go. The New Yorker Mark Revhan and his son Matt are cranking out. Need some fries down? At the restaurant and butcher shop, first opened by Mark's dad 32 years ago. Okay, well, where is this at? Basically, that? I mean, you have a, a chicken, a duck, and a turkey. So what I'm going to do me. is I'm going to take this chicken and cut it right down the back. Yeah, so get the back out of there. there. Yep, you want to yep. get your knife tip in here, this is the oyster meat of the chicken. Oh, Right now, oh. the duck. Same way. I like this. All right. This okay. is kind of like culinary Disneyland for a dude like me. All right. Big turkey. If I'm down far enough, Ooh. this is going to pull Wait, right He's the duck who drives and whatever? Yeah. Guy Fury. Thank you, Moon. Yeah, yeah. That okay. guy. All right. That was money, dude. Yeah. Oh, he's okay, money. Try this one? Sure. Absolutely. Be my guess. I feel a good finger cutting coming in. Maybe All right. Kind of Here we go. Down. Yep. Meat. There it is. Good job. <laughs> We're going to take the duck and the chicken. I'm going to hit it with a little Cajun seasoning. Throw the Cajun. Duck down. Same with the chicken. Chicken goes on a little, the, the, this is the super hot side, a little less hot. Right, right. Okay, now what I'm going to do, put some Can of the black seasoning on here. Okay, one. Virgin olive oil here. Get it into the seams. Like all right. That's where you took the thigh bones right. out. A little blackening on this guy. And take some of this cornbread stuffing. Here. Mm. Now you're gonna mm. go to your spinach stuffing here. Now you're gonna put some andouille sausage. Can you guys oh. make the andouille sausage also? Oh, you're on premises. Some roasted red bell peppers. Oh, that looks good. Now now you're gonna take your duck. I wish you could do that. Wait a minute. Can I find the full screen? Hold on. Oh, there it is. Okay, Inside thank you. Turkey. You're not doing as much now. It's kind of hiding him in there now. Yeah. Now we're gonna go. We're probably gonna the start it again though, because we didn't see the whole thing. All right. Stock pot. That was money, dude. Yeah. Okay, right. can I try this one? Sure, absolutely. Be my guess. I feel a good finger cutting coming in. And you're just gonna kind of go down, pull the meat. There it is. Good job. Ah! <laughs> 
we're going to take the duck and the chicken. I'm going to hit it with a little Cajun seasoning. Okay, hold on. Uh, well, let's see, where'd, where'd you go? Uh, Thanos snap feminism. John Madden made this famous. Didn't he have like the six-legged turkey or whatever? Thanksgiving. I don't know if he had a turducken, but uh, John Madden was fucking cool. <laughs> Did you guys hear Mike Dicka passed away, 80 years old, like this weekend? God, God, rest in peace, man. You know, he was he was a character for sure. Throw the duck down. All right, there's a duck. The chicken. Yeah. It was on a little. The, the, this is the super hot side. A little less hot. Right. 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 Okay. Now what I'm gonna do? Put some of the guy feeding things with the same phones and shit. It's there. Oil here. Get it into the seams. Mm. Pockets where you took the thigh bones out. A little blackening on this guy. Okay. Get some of this cornbread stuffing. Ooh. Here. Now you're gonna yeah. go to your spinach stuffing here. Now you're gonna put some andouille sausage. Mm. You guys make the andouille sausage also? Or you're on premises. Right. Some roasted red bell peppers. Oh, that looks good. Mm. Now now you're gonna take your duck inside this here we go. turkey. Here we go. You're not doing as much now. It's kind of hiding him in there now. Yeah. Now we're gonna go to the chicken. I bet you have a lot of friends come Thanksgiving <laughs> and Christmas time. You're just gonna take it and you're gonna bring right. it up and turn it like this. Sometimes it's best to have a friend. No, I mean Captain Critter. You're gonna, you're inviting us all down for for turducken this Thanksgiving. You some bitch. Good for you. We'll we'll be there. <laughs> you better get a few more extra turduckens. You hold it. I grab it. Let me see if I can find somebody. <laughs> when is your uh, spring clothing line coming out? Because you're really <laughs> doing a Mac job. Oh yeah, dude. You make that look so easy. That might be one of the best looking uncooked. Food items I've ever, I mean, it's just beautiful. Yeah, wait till this motherfucker's cooked, though. Uh, whatever your name is. Kind of set it up in here. <laughs> now, how right, long? You know, now we're going. Super bird take. This super bird here is going to take uh, about twelve to thirteen hours at two hundred oh, degrees. How many? Twelve to thirteen hours. The bears, Mike Dicka. The bears, exactly. Well, he made it to eighty years old. I mean, that's all right, you know. What are you going to do? Good for him. Hot. Thank you. One, two, two, three. three. All right. Right. Let it rest for like 15 minutes. So. I feel better. I see. Hey, you get do. Crazy. I'm going to cut it right down the middle. Oh, no. All Steam right. Coming off that. Oh, you should smell that. Holy moly. Oh. How does that look for you? Uh, I've got a I've got a really big hard on right now, actually. So, Rusty, are you gonna you're gonna make this for us? <laughs> Is that what you're gonna do? All right. Oh man, it's a good cool. combination. Definitely the richness of the duck and the fat. And How then, fat. yeah. You know what I pick up in there is the andouille. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Funny thing, Moon, is that this is when Guy's Fury Road, whatever the fuck this guy. He was like 25 years old. Uh, he's not that way anymore, but all right. Yeah. And the chicken has such a lighter texture mm -hmm. than turkey. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. JLM, it's not bad, right? He was, uh, what was he, a defensive back? He was a player in the 60s. Then he became a coach. And then, you know, he did his coach thing. He was the 86, you know, Chicago Bears, the Bears. Ah, he had a good life. I mean, 80. If I make it to 80, I'm going to be happy about that. You know, I mean, God bless him. You know, his family, you know, uh, sorry for the loss. But, I mean, what do you want? You know, 80 is pretty good. That is a flavor fest right there. Yeah, good. Yeah, Kush, good to hear that. Yeah. I mean, 80 years old, eh, yeah, what are you going to do? You know, my, my mother made it to 80. I mean, that's pretty good. My dad is at 80. Fucking 88. Still alive. I mean, you know, every day is a blessing. You know, if you're fucking 88. I mean, come on now. Oh, okay. <clears throat> That's it, huh? Okay. Well, let's do some more shit. Why not? We're here. Okay. Let's, how about pierogi? Pierogi. Oh, my God. Pierogi. Oh, uh, God, I can't even fucking type anymore. Pierogi. This will piss off. Pierogi. All right. Homemade pierogi. Let's do a pierogi recipe. Here we go. Yes. Natasha's Kitchen. There we go. 
Mm, where's the video? Mm, doesn't that look tasty? All right, here she is, Natasha. Go ahead. Loading the app. Oh, all right, good. Great. Nothing. Dicka. I think I'm a... I think you'd be a booba. I think I'm a... No, I mean, you know, Mike Dicka, you know, he was honest. You know, he was just a... <clears throat> he was a tough guy. It seems, anyway. And, again, 80 years old. You know, what What do you want? You know, give me 80, I'll be happy. So, okay. Uh, go. Around. Around Kiki. If the Kiki was square. Yes. Yes. Yeah, all right. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, that's great. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Foc focaccia bread, yeah. All right, we'll take that. Sure. One, two, three, four. Um, um, um. Getting funky with it. Digga, let's go. What if YouTube will find that? <laughs> He's a racist. I mean, yeah, give me, give me 80. I'll, I'll be happy. <laughs> I mean, give me tomorrow. I'm good. You know, I've lived, I've lived my life, you know, whatever. It's fine. Hamster, but Bookus died at 80. Dicka still alive. No, no, no. He just passed away this weekend. Mike Dicka just passed away. So awesome and healthy for you. Actually, I, I was on, uh, who was the other guy? Not, not Dicka. Uh, the one guy, John Madden, John Madden, he brought his bus into town one day. I had to go there and do some radio shit. Yeah. He was, a, he was, a, seemed like a decent guy, but he didn't like to fly. And so he drove his fucking bus all over the place. <laughs> and I was on that bus. Yeah. I had some elk. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Had some elk, moose, you know, deer, raccoon. Mouse, rat, <laughs> of course, Mr. Hemi Four Speed. He's probably had some moose up there, eh? What we can... There we go. All right. Hey everybody, it's Natasha from Natasha's Kitchen.com. Hi, Today yeah. I'm going to teach you how to make the perfect white rice. This is so easy. We're doing you just need a few ingredients and a Fuck. saucepan with a tight fitting lid. Okay. So let's get started. I mean, we're cooking anyway, so why not? Oh my god. Wait. Loki is back and better than ever. All right, what is this bullshit? I don't care. What, what, what is this? The universe agrees. <laughs> ah, thank you. All right, I'll pull a chef. All right. There we go. I'm the Polish chef. Hi, the Polish Today, chef. Yeah, yeah, there we go. I'll show you how to make potato filled pierogi. Pierogi. Loved by all. Pierogi. Made by few. Mm. No, I mean, just to, you know, give my bias beforehand. I like the potato pierogi and the cheese pierogi. That's me. But, you know, what do you, what do I care? Pierogi are made in Central and Eastern Europe. They go under the Eric Zombro said somebody made armadillo at his son's wedding. Oh, my God. Well, I mean, if you can eat it, fuck it. <laughs> Who cares? I know uh, Rusty Rivers, buddy. Uh, what is it? Uh, KVM or whatever. He <laughs> only eat it. If you can't fuck it, it'll eat it, you know, because that's the way it works. All right. Fried squirrel brains over there in Montana, or wherever the hell you are. All right, let's get the pierogi. Different names, they have different fillings. Okay. Today, we're going to make with potato and cheese. Okay. You can enjoy them during the holidays. Ooh, potato and cheese is good. Yeah. Year. All right. We're going to start with potatoes. Mm. Russet potatoes. Boil them for about 30 minutes. Mm fork tender mm. after take them out of the water let yeah. them cool off yes and seal them meanwhile 
Get your onions ready. The onions okay. will be used as a part of the filling. <clears throat> no, a shot of whiskey. I said, if you can't fuck it, eat it. <laughs> oh, God. I'm evil. I'm evil. Strong. Our potatoes right. are cool. So there now we go. We're going to remove the skin. Okay. You like to cut them in a half. To now, I know for pierogi, you have to take the skins off because it doesn't work. But fucking skins, man. I, I love potato skins. Gone with John is here. <gasps> oh, my God. Look who's here. He's on Big Tau TV. All right. Well, put the link in the thing, man. Do it. Put put your linky in the thingy, McDoodle. Did you get whacked on uh, YouTube? Why, Utah? Are you an evil man? Oh, my God. <laughs> no. Put the link in there, John. All right, let's go. There's any rot spots. This Halloween, a mystery oh. lurks around every corner. Bundle right. up with Disney right. Plus and Hulu. I'm going to need you to spread the word. Sound the alarm! Yeah, another fucking movie about Halloween shit. Who gives a fuck? I'm sorry. You'll have so much fun. <laughs> it's scary. That's going to be a game changer. The Disney Bundle. Uh, I just Disney don't Plus care. Opening a can of beans is like opening your kitchen up to a world of possibility. I love that I can open the pantry, grab a convenient okay. can of beans, and make something that's quick, yeah. satisfying, and right. delicious. I rely on smart staples like S and W beans for fast, affordable meals that my kids love. This is supposed to be my super. Easy I mean, I like beans. You know, don't get me wrong. I'm gonna have some beans this weekend. Well, it's almost the end of the weekend. Dear God, Spearman is here. Hello, brother John. You were in MGTOW TV, it says. Uh, probably. I don't know. Hey, Moon. I mean, it's beans. It's like getting that time Easy, of the year. Easy, budget-friendly oh. way to feed the family. But I couldn't stop mm. eating it. It was so good. I mean, it's not a bad bean, too. You know, they, they do a pretty good job. Did you know uh, that right. beans are one of the most sustainable protein sources, too? You're getting plant SW beans. beans save 10% in the chat below for the beans. Oh, my God. All right. Just to the side. All right. Now we will rice potatoes. And that's okay. a good exercise. All right. Here we go. You can also use a potato measure. Again, this guy's a Polak, so he knows what he's doing here. He learned from his grandma, right? But this works well. All right. All right. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Boom. Add half a teaspoon of salt and quarter teaspoon of pepper. Okay. All right. We're okay. using ricotta cheese. Ricotta. You can also use farmer's cheese. Okay. All right. To go into the mixture. No, I did not know you put ricotta cheese in here. Okay. All right. I, I learned something new today, guys. You know, write that down. Mix well. Mix it well. Fold yep. the potatoes into the cheese and make the mixture into the nice cheese. Okay. And smooth. All right. If you yeah. like. To use farmer's cheese, you may, but if it's too dry. You don't have an egg in there, though? There's no egg? Yeah, I know, Moon. Beans are good. Yeah, the fucking ads are and terrible. Just a little bit of sour cream. And Moon, it's Christmas time, so we're going to get a lot more ads. So Put it in the refrigerator. You should give it a little taste. All right, give it a taste. Yep. Perfect. All right. And some people like to forget the onions, but not me. No, 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 no. You can't forget the onions when you're doing pierogi. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> That's a sine qua known there, Rusty. You know what that means. All right. You got to put the onions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get them in there. Mm, nice yeah, yeah, yeah. Golden. Mm. How could you not be hungry? I mean, my God. It's crazy. Here we go. Yeah. Fold that into a dough. Yeah. All right. Nice the filling. Well, that's the filling. Dish. Okay. All right. I don't know. Makes Take sense. Yeah. Okay. Put it in the yeah, fridge. The there you go. While this is cooling off, is a good time to clean the kitchen. No up. eggs. No yeah. eggs, Spearman. <laughs> no eggs. Because then you make a big mess, and after that, you're disappointed. What I made, 36 pierogi, and uh, I got to hire a crew to have it cleaned up. Okay, there we have it. All right. Now, in a few minutes, after I have my beer, we'll make 
dough. We're going to make the dough here. So he's got to have a brewski. I mean, come on. You know, give him a break. All right. That should be very interesting. It should be, yes. I'm going to hire somebody to do that. Mm. When I was growing oh. up and my great-grandmother was to make either pierogi or kopitka or any pasta, kluski, you name it. Kluski, she had yeah. This nice wooden board. It's called okay. stolnica. And she would do everything on this board and go right onto the stove and boil it. Mm. A little bulky to store. But if you have a large kitchen, it's a great thing to have. So now we're going to make the pierogi dough. We have okay. four cups of flour, All right. All right. little flour for dusting. We're going to put water, eggs in this this time? Two eggs. Yeah. And salt. There are the eggs. We'll crack yep. the eggs. All right. In the water. That's interesting. You crack the eggs in the water. Okay. Or is that vinegar? What did he say? Might be vinegar. Hold on. Two eggs and salt. We'll okay. Crack the eggs in the water. Okay. Huh. I'm gonna make a pierogi dough. We have four cups of flour, little flour for dusting, cup of water. Oh, it is water. Okay. Two eggs and salt in the water. Okay. We'll crack the eggs. All right. Hmm. Stir this up. Hmm. Oh. All right. Hi, my name is Hi. Daniel and I created this painting. Hello, and Daniel. I want you to imagine. Hey, Daniel, we got Moon in the chat here. So Moon can handle the painting and the drawings. So there's that. Use the fork to stir. Stir the thing. With your yep egg water mixture by okay. mixing the eggs with water yeah i i've never seen that before where you, you the eggs in the water mm, that's new to me okay and then stirring everything together it's much easier than okay. putting the eggs right into the flour okay all right I think that's okay good. okay yeah okay i get it yeah yeah i suppose yeah all right here we go. Here we go. Mm. Roll that out on the. Uh... Now we will. You don't have to knead this for a long time. You want to sprinkle a little salt, flour. Okay. That's when this mm. board comes handy. It's everything. I mean, doesn't everybody get a boner when we're seeing people cook things here? I know I am. I mean, I'm hard as a rock, baby. Try to make a smooth mixture because that's what the recipe calls for. And you should not question me. I'm oh, the there's lobster in the background. Okay. Let's set this aside. Okay. Make sure you cover with. Let it rest for a while. Plastic. Okay. So it doesn't dry out and let it rest. Let it rest. How long? Remember, you always have to clean up. Mm. Clean up while you're right. cooking. Bees in plus, yeah, or whatever that's called. Yeah. So the dough's been resting for about 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. All right. I'm going to cut this go. in half. Okay. Wrap the rest oh. a later. Double plastic. <gasps> what? Put a little flour on my board. Okay, all right. And start rolling it. It's got the little itty bitty roller thingy. From the center out. My God. It's important to put a little flour from time to time mm -hmm. and roll evenly as possible. So it doesn't stick. Yeah. And not too thin because you're going to mm. stretch it around the filling. Mm. All right. Mm. Let me check and see how it looks. He did the potato now onions. I'm going to introduce you so. to a pierogi master maker. This is Susan, my wife. Oh, there she is. Yep. Really make pierogi. First, the inspection thing comes in. Very good job. Thank you. Here, cut your circles. Cut your circles. So this is about a right. three-inch cutter. This is my favorite part. Some people use a glass, but this is uh, nice and sharp. You can show oh, yeah. this if you yeah. want to. Yep. Oh, yep. Glass will do. 
whatever you you know whatever you got to do right you don't have to have all the tools you can just we'll save this have, under the plastic. have lib <laughs> whatever it takes <laughs> lovely now we're going to go after our mixture okay all right here we go Thank you, the sir. best part here i think there we go potatoes cheese onions yes i'm using a, a, a dish here it's about one mm -hmm. ounce Works really well for making the oh yeah nice and oh yummy. yeah but if you don't have it you can use a spoon Right All right, here we go. Now we will show you mm. a proper way to seal a pierogi. I mean, it, it looks delicious to me. You know, call me crazy, but I, I like it. Looks pretty good. A little um, board or something. Okay, here's Susan. All right. On after you've shaped them. All right. The secret to making a really good pierogi is to stretch the dough around stretch the it filling. And re there you go. Getting the filling yep. in between the seams. Yep. Put a little water on there so it stays together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you kind of gently push the filling in and then bring the mm -hmm. dough together and then pinch. Yes. And always keep a little flour on your hands. And but I mean, she said boil them. Don't they fry them? I guess they boil them first, then fry them. Well, we're going to find out here on the hamster channel. Pinch really tight. Uh, the hamster cooking channel. <laughs> Just for fun. Until it's sealed. Mm. Okay. I mean, I'm looking at the, the, those are fat pierogi. I like it. Give me more of the stuffing in there. Oh, baby. Do it for me. Susan, do it. Okay. So the next step is to boil the pierogi. Boil the water pierogi. is boiling vigorously. And I'm Put salt in the water? Gently drop them into the water. Okay. And once they come up, boil them for about three minutes. Then they're done. Okay. All right. <clears throat> then we're going to fry them. To disrupt yeah. Them and Yep, we're going to fry them. Mm. Well, they're boiling pretty good, and nothing's opening up, so I guess we did a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. These are floating to the top, and they look there we go. Like they are ready to be. Let's get that butter in the pan, boys. Come on now. Mm. Damn. They're pretty yep. good, pretty good. Uh, you want to put a little oil on your... Oh, they're going to do peanut oil. Plate, okay, all right. It won't stick. Now all we have to do is just... Okay. All right. off a little bit. The next step is you could eat them just like this mm -hmm. and put some melted butter and some onions. I like to just fry them up a little bit in a fry frying them up pan, a little bit. Oh, yeah. A little brown and then put the onions all over and have a little sour cream on the side. But that's your preference. So this is the final step. In a large frying pan, melt some butter. Oh, the butter is in there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Once yep. the butter is melted, gently. Gently. Put the pierogi in there and fry them up. Mmm, yeah. As I said earlier, it's not necessary to do that. This is I like the fried ones. We used to serve That's me. Our restaurant. This is yeah. how we like it. I like it. You yeah. don't want to overcrowd your pierogi in your frying pan. You don't want to cook them to death either. Just, just, a, little bit, just right? a little bit, right? Just a little bit. Just a little bit, yeah. Throughout, yep. just want to give them a little color. Mm -hmm. Yep, they look pretty good. I like them a little more brown, so it's just a little more brown. More okay, minutes. yeah, there you go. You want to there you go, just like that. Oh, oh, yeah, this time I would like to heat up my previously fried onions for the topping. Yeah, exactly. To put a little dollop of yeah, Grinch, just till they're just a little bit golden, just a little bit. Doesn't have to be brown. Just a little bit of crust on them. Oh my God! Sour cream and just it's heaven. Place them around. Sour cream. Mm -mm -mm. Serve. Oh yeah. Yes. I mean, do you put borscht on them too, like some cabbage, or what do you do here? Just sour cream. Oh, that's that's beautiful. Look at that. Onions on there? Oh, stop. Excuse me. I have to jerk my turbo chicken. Mm. 
Now the pierogi are finished. All right. Letter. There we go. With onions, sour cream in the center. All we have to do is plate them up. There you go. Pierogi here. Onion and sour cream. And a little sour cream. Oh yeah. Thank you. There you go, Susie. What do you think? Oh, we're both going to eat at the same time. All right. There you go. Sour cream. Mm hmm. All we need is some beer, but sorry, I finished it. Oh, damn it. Ketchup on pierogi. Shot of whiskey. No, no, no. No. Bon appetit. <clears throat> bon appetit. Salute. Enjoy it. Mm. Hope you'll subscribe to the Polish chef. And I mean, that looks pretty good. I have to admit, that's that. <clears throat> that's almost easy drunk food, you know? Yeah, you know, if you're drinking too much, it's like, hey, Kush, you got anything to eat? Hell yeah, man, we'll make pierogi. Because, you know, reasons and shit. <laughs> Have you ever seen this guy? Uh, let's see if I can find I, You know, I'm not going to be able to find him. So I'm going to wrap it up. But that was fun. Let's see what else we have. Vigo's the Polish chef. All right, what we got? This is your season to smile with Aspen Dental's anniversary savings event. Right, right. Celebrating 25 years of affordable care and $500 off your dentures or implants. Book today. I have to admit, Moon, that it, that does look pretty good. <clears throat> a little sour cream. I would like a little bit of cabbage or borscht on there as well. But, uh, you know, that's me. I'm Eastern European. So, yeah, there's that. Hey, this is the last hoodie you're okay. ever going to need to buy. Bare skin, tactical. <clears throat> hey, Moon, it's your favorite. Commercial hoodie, bare skin, bare skin hoodie. What? All right, go ahead. Let's see ah. what's gonna happen here. Yeah, is YouTube gonna whack us? Probably. No, not yet. All right. Hey, I'm the Polish chef. Polish Today, chef. Today we're gonna make hunter stew, Ooh. otherwise known as bigos. No, to total about it. Let's go shopping. Okay. For our ingredients, I'm making a visit to Hapanovich Brothers Market in New York Mills, New York. Let's okay, well, here, I mean, here's the thing, though. It is coming up on the fall season where we would like to have, like, fall food. You know, it's it's warming and comforting. And it's, you know, all that kind of shit. And, of course, if you're cushy, you say, I got the munchies. <sighs> Just give me some of that pierogi, baby. Do it. Do it now. Get some mushrooms, carrots, no, sauerkraut. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bag of polished dry mushrooms and right, a right. beautiful head of fresh cabbage. Oh, God, you got to have cabbage. Come on now. Can I help you? Yes, good morning. Uh, I'm going to need a uh, pound of cubed beef and a couple of pounds of uh, cubed pork. Okay. MGTOW Cowboy says he's crushing on pearly these days. Well, sir, the last, the first hour of this stream was all about the pearl. So have fun. Hey, Thank you. Okay, here's your two but Grinchy's going away. Oh no! All right, take care. Oh, that was great. Your beef coming right up. Anything great. else? That, that'd be all for today. Mm -hmm. okay. Hey, thanks a lot. Thank Have you. a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you. First, I get all my ingredients ready: coarsely okay. chopped apples. All right. Sliced carrots. Thinly sliced cabbage. Mm. I mean, is it me? I fucking love cabbage. I could just eat the, the, the whole thing. Just eat it. <laughs> it's beautiful. It makes sense to me. You know, crazy. Sliced mushroom. There, oh, God. Yes. <gasps> Diced oh, no. onions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Canned tomatoes. Oh, God, yes. Migos also requires it's some garlic. It's fucking soul here. What are they doing? I have some prunes. This is going to add sweetness to the bigos. <laughs> That's going to make you shit your too. pants, too. All right. Good. Good. There I we have go. Some polished dry mushrooms. Okay. All right. Soak them in hot boiling water. I mean, how could you go wrong with mushrooms? I mean, just how is it possible? I, I don't think so. Sauerkraut. Yes, Kush. You love, you love cabbage. <laughs> Rinse and squeeze. Oh, we got sour, sauerkraut as well. Nice okay. kielbasa. Ooh, Smoking kielbasa, well. yeah, yeah. Take the mushrooms out, chop right. them up, and save yep. them for later. I'm mm. going to fry all my meat. Okay, here we go. You don't need to cook the meat, just brown it. 
get the Mel Yard reaction on that shit. How can you despise cabbage, Jeremy? What the? What's wrong with you? <laughs> oh God, garlic chopping skills on point, exactly, biggest. That's why I like to watch these videos instead of complaining. Oh, those fucking women or whatever. It's like ah, here's some useful skills we can learn. I like this. Vid loss. You missed. You missed Grinchy. He just left. Good to see you, though. All right. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, all right. There's the meat. Glaze the pan with red wine. I'm yes. using Merlot. Yes. <laughs> of course. Goes right into the pot. I'm going to put a little oil and fry my cabbage, <laughs> onion. Yes. Yes. Mushroom mixture. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. I mean, cabbage is like life. It's beautiful. I love it. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Get a little flavor on it. Yep. Dump it in. Mm -hmm. Yep. And sauerkraut, too. Okay. And my apples. Goes and carrots and apples. All right. In goes kielbasa. How are we making here, anyway? Just wondering. Mushrooms. Mushrooms again. Uh huh. Okay. Bay leaves. Cut up canned tomatoes. Mm. Tomato paste. Okay. All right. I want to add some pepper. Okay. I got my oven set to 350. Oh, we're putting it in the oven. Okay. There it goes. All right. See you in a couple hours. It's been about two hours and. I am curious. I want to take a peek at this. Yes, we all are. Let's yeah. take a look. Oh, it started looking good. I forgot to add uh, paprika, so let me. Mm, I can almost smell it. Paprika. Really, mm. it's gotta go. That looks back delicious. In the oven for a little bit. Mm -hmm. it smells great. Beautiful. So it's been over two and a half hours. It's yep. Time to come out. The whole house. There. Yep. It smells really good. It smells like. Holidays. Mm. It looks great. Yeah. So last week I took a trip to this uh, small local brewery where three guys are. Making yeah, Zombro. That's uh, that's some kind of Eastern European Christmas stew or something. That looks really good. And some really good stuff. And mm -hmm. I picked up this bottle of beer that they made not too long ago in the uh, whiskey barrels. And we'll give a try that. It's a woodland brewery. Uh, it's a really neat place. I also got some locally made rye to go with our hunter stew. Hunter stew, okay. All right, there's the wine or the beer or whatever. Yeah. All right. Feed the crew here. Mmm. Mmm. Tell me when. A little more. Yeah, more. Okay, that looks good. No more. more. Parsley? Please, yep. more. Parsley, yep. Mm hmm. There's a rye on the side for you. Mm hmm. Let me skip the beer because you're filming. Do you toast it? There we go. Mm. Mm. Damn. The rice texture. It's almost as good as mine. No, it's real good. Remember, good food is good for you. And this tastes like Poland. I think Armenians have a better one than this. Yes. <laughs> I think that looks really good. That looks delicious. So, all right. Well, we'll do some more food maybe tomorrow. But for now, guys, I got to go because I got to eat some frozen dinner and go to bed and hope my arm doesn't fall off. It's always good to see you guys. Hope you enjoy the show. And we'll hit it again tomorrow. We'll see what happens. All right. Have a good night. God bless. Take care. Oh, wait. I, excuse me. One second. Iridium Kush, stroganoff, beef stroganoff. Oh, God. With the mushrooms and the sour cream. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. I'll see you good ice tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. Hey, thanks, Moon, for the, uh, for the drawing, and thanks for coming by. See ya. Take care. Bye-bye.